folks. I know there's a history here. I'd like to get this hearing in today. You know, everybody needs to just focus on the relevant facts, okay? Um, I know there's a history here. I Are you talking up by Sunset Mart? Up the hill by the gas station? Yeah. Okay. Why did you... Here. Who's responsible here? Whose house is this? Okay, drive careful, okay? This is what the other group had that ran away. Oh, really? It just ditched it? Awesome. Those ones kept walking in the car. This truly is for the win. complaint we've had here tonight within two hours. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, is this your place? Yeah. Perfect, you know why we're here? Um, I see noise. Noise, yeah. Yeah. Big speaker right there? Yeah. Nothing against having a party. Once neighbors start calling in, then we have an issue. Like, brains, and like, if you need a lot of brains, you're going to be in trouble. 29th or people that were murdered and you want to fuck around you got eight seven eight families that are being affected by this and nobody from the universe shock value and so what he did was he had taken pictures pictures of our nest oh you're from i would be outraged if i live in moscow right now i'd be lighting some cars on fire out there i'd be flipping some cars i'd get the frats going wild let's get some noise complaints going All right, guys, what is up? Welcome to <clears throat> Truth and Transparency. Saturday night, what's up? What's up? Right there. I'm gonna give a shout out to all my mods. Look at that. Uh, right about there. All of you guys, so special. Again, thank you guys for being here. Truth and Transparency, moderators, subscribers, members. Appreciate you guys. Um, welcome. We got some fireworks going off, so bear with that. Um, it's it's hard to come on any show, so um, you know Marilyn's gonna come out. She's she's actually like with her. She has a little daughter, so she's um, situating um, her baby, um, and then she's gonna pop on here. So I'm gonna kind of reverse up the order, but like I said, anybody would have. Uh, First time jitters, kind of like, oh, God, should I do this? Should I not? Um, but she will be on here at approximately in the next, like, I don't know, 30, 34 minutes. Remember, it's 10 um, East Coast time, but it's 7 over there. So, um, again, kids come first, families come first. But if you guys are here tonight, Marilyn was – the passenger in um right here oh 
Hello, Deputy Miller Sheriff's Office. Hello. Driver's license, vehicle registration. Right here. This is the Emma Bailey DUI pullover. Um, so um, Emma is, I'm sorry, <clears throat> Marilyn is Emma's passenger. She's uh, known Emma for a very long time. Um, but what we're going to be doing is we're going to break down depending on how, you know, she is nervous to come out, uh, but she's with her daughter. She's finishing up, but we were going to go through this DUI. Well, it turns into a DUI, a stop that turns into a DUI and um, just kind of like talk about it in terms of, wow, after you realize that you would have never saw this or anything about it until it came out. Um, so, but, um, so think about that as like your friend, you think somebody's your friend and the next thing you know, they're over here telling a police officer like, Oh, if there's anything in that car, it's all Maryland's it's all Maryland's. And you guys remember when I broke this down the first time I said, Oh, I said, she just up and said that everything that was in that car is that girl's. Um, so, but Again, what is up, everybody? How are we doing? How are we feeling? Um, let's see. So again, I'm switching up the order a little bit. I, like I said, for those for those couple reasons. Um, but hopefully, you guys are having an amazing or start to have an amazing uh, holiday weekend. Cheers! Let's get twisted with it. Yeah. Um, if you guys have never seen the video, you guys will be able to see some of that tonight. Um, let's talk, though, while I'm switching up gears to come back for um, to talk about everything with Emma, um, with this night in particular. Nancy Grace. Um, Nancy Grace deserve some of my attention um, because I know you guys want to hear her voice, but I told you guys that I would talk about, and basically, I guess you could say roast it kind of Nancy Grace just did a segment and um, you know, I have no idea what the fuck mainstream media is up to, but I get people messaging me saying, Oh my God, did you see this? Did you see this? Did you see this? And I'm thinking, what are y'all talking about? That it was like a couple like days ago, if not like a week ago when, you know, Ann Taylor dropped the bomb about, Oh my God, there's, there's nothing in the car. There's, you know, Oh my God, they're going to get the grand jury stuff. Like, well, yeah, that's what was going on on Tuesday. And then prior to that, like, you know, Ann put out a motion like last Friday, <clears throat> the only, I think mainstream media that has talked about Brian Kober's case in a way that's like, yeah, gonna give it a little bit. Uh, the Daily Mail did something um, a couple days ago. Maybe it was like 24 hours ago. It all just blends together. But so let's just like kick off. Um, let's kick off with some laughs. I think uh, for those of you guys that have had a long week, um, but check this out. Come on over here, Nancy. Get over here, Nancy. Come here, girl. Let's see. Mm. There it is, Nancy. Mm. It never ends with quadruple murder suspect Brian Koberger, does it? Never ends. And Nancy, I don't even know what that means. I don't even know what you're talking about. It never ends. What never ends? This case just started. Last days, his attorneys are challenging. Challenging. Can you fucking believe it, Nancy? DNA evidence produced by the state 
claiming that DNA from three other men were found at the crime scene. Can you believe that, Nancy, that anybody would challenge that? <laughs> Why would you not challenge that, Nancy? <laughs> Three other male unidentified DNA. We understand that there is DNA from two males, not Koberger, inside the home on King Road and DNA evidence, male DNA found on a glove found outside the home. I recall seeing a practically frozen mitten. <laughs> She saw a frozen mitten. Was that when you put that pop-up table and you sat outside the residence and you went live from 1122 King? Was that when you saw the frozen mitten, when you popped up your table right outside the residence? Is that when you saw the frozen mitten? In the snow outside the home. I don't think that that had anything to do with the murders themselves. But this is going to be an attack on the state's case, and it will probably turn into an attack on the victims themselves. Joining me right now, Chris. Wait a second. What? It'll probably turn into an attack on the victims themselves because they're attacking the DNA evidence. What the fuck, Nancy? Help me understand that, Nancy. You just inserted the fact that they're going to go victim bashing and blaming because they want to challenge the, the DNA. They just want to know, did you all do the same with that DNA? Like, I mean, come on, Nancy. But here, she wants to bring in somebody. It's McDonough. Chris! Star of the interview room on YouTube. Also, director at Cold Case Foundation. You can find him at coldcasefoundation.org. So he got a big plug for this. But for today, his relevance is because he has investigated over 300 homicide cases. We have the attack on the state's DNA evidence. We have other attacks ongoing, claiming that the police, LA law enforcement, had tunnel vision on Koberger, thereby shutting out investigation of any other potential suspect. And we also have now rising to the forefront a prior criminal arrest by Koberger. Up until now, we have been told that he was Lily White, pure as a nun. But now. <laughs> What the fuck are you talking about, girl? We were told that he was pure. Will what? I've never even heard this phrase before. Who told you that he was what? Nancy. Did you write this script? Let me read this again. Rising to the forefront. A prior criminal arrest by Koberger. Up until now, we have been told that he was Lily White, pure as a nun. But now we're learning that's not <laughs> entirely true. You know what? Before we hit the DNA attack, let me go to Chris McDonough joining me. Chris, the reality is that he is not the saint the defense has painted him out to be wait when has the defense painted him to be a saint nancy this the, the state hasn't painted him to be anything because there's a gag order since they've had the case there's been a non-dissemination order so what the fuck has the 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 defense claimed nancy the defense can't claim anything because they're not allowed to talk the only people that are claiming anything is you <laughs> pure as a nun what lily white lily white in the conservatory with the candlestick what do you make of his prior arrest his prior arrest nancy 
he was arrested because his dad turned him in for stealing his other kid's cell phone when he was like, I don't even know how old, eight years ago, like I think he was 20. He stole his sister's cell phone. What do you think about that, Nancy? Let's see. Let's ask Chris. Let's ask Chris. <laughs> let's ask Chris what he thinks about it. Because that's why you have him on the show. Well, Nancy, I mean, and thank you for having me. I'm so grateful. Um, you know, it just goes into what we've been talking about um, as we've discussed, Brian Koberger. We're going to start seeing information that will provide itself uh, into the public arena about his previous behaviors and his uh, previous interests. And obviously now that this is. Chris, what are you talking about? What do you, what are his previous interests? How do you know anything about Brian, Chris? Did you talk to him? You know, what was it like pet detective? Did you talk to the fish? Did you go, ee, 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 ee. <laughs> Come forward, these, you know, we, we have had the image house. initially of this young man, you know, who was struggling through school, uh, wanted How do you to talk become to a dolphin? police. You act like a dolphin? Uh, yet now this arrest, you know, surfaces and you start thinking to yourself, well, wait a minute, maybe he wasn't as pristine as the defense has, you know, been presenting uh, through the motions. Um, I think it's fascinating that the defense has gone on, um, you know, the deep, the offense here uh, by utilizing verbiage such as, you know, uh, these reports that contain exculpatory information. I mean, you as a, uh, you know. What are they talking about? What is he, who is painting anybody as who? Look at, I just, look at. Who's painting anybody as who? Nobody can say anything. Like, wait, wait, I don't understand. <laughs> who's painting anybody like anything? What are y'all talking about, man? Happy Hey, happy Canada Day, Maple B. I'm just, I'm in awe over here. Um, let me see something here. Okay, here you guys go. I got something for you. Snowflake is not available. Snowflake is not available right now. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, about that, Nancy. We're going to go right back here to Nancy. A trial attorney, a very successful prosecutor, um, what 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 sticks out to you? I mean, when we, when we start seeing this type of stuff, you know, present itself. Are you talking about the prior arrest, or are you talking about the DNA challenge? Both, both. Well, with the DNA challenge, I would expect it. I mean, now that we know other male DNA is at the scene, of course they're going to challenge it. But what matters to me in that vein is where. What do you mean? Of course, they're going to challenge the male DNA seen at the scene. Like, of course they are. Yeah, Nancy, of course they are. So, like, why aren't you saying it like the other way, which is, oh, wow. They're... Why wouldn't the prosecution be like, yeah, we did a we did a tree for them, too. We did a tree for this person. We did a tree for that person. We did trees for everybody. We got trees everywhere. We got Oprah style tree. Everybody gets a family tree. Everybody gets a family tree. Like. We're talking about how you got to Brian Kohlberger and they can't even show how they got to Brian Kohlberger. That's that's the problem. Like. When has the defense wrote an emotion that says, we think Brian's the Pope. We think Brian's this. We, they haven't done an interview. They've never talked to the media. They've never talked anywhere. What in the world are you talking about? That the defense 
they're defending their client based off of the lack of transparency, which is what you're violating people's rights. If you're not being transparent, if you're, you're hiding your case, that's not what you're supposed to do. Nancy, stick to the facts. Don't think to don't. Why are you guys making this all like emotional? Stick to the facts. What's the DNA found? Was it found on one of the murder victims? If that it's, it's highly incriminating toward that other male, or was it found on the coffee pot downstairs? Was it found on the door handle? Was it found on a coffee pot, Nancy? Was it found on one of the victims? Was it found in a coffee pot? Was it? Well, Nancy, we don't know because the prosecution <laughs> is hiding their case. <laughs> You're right. We don't know where it's at. <laughs> and neither does the defense. The light switch. That means nothing as opposed to Koberger's DNA found on the sheath of the murder weapon. How do you know that that sheath is actually, in fact, the murder weapon? No one's ever said that, that she the sheath is the murder weapon toward that other male or was it found on the coffee pot downstairs was it found on mm -hmm. the door handle again we would know all of this if if the prosecution would be transparent what was it found on a light switch that means nothing as opposed to Koberger's DNA found on the sheath of the murder weapon in the bed with how do you know if the sheath is the sheath of the murder weapon there nancy why isn't there any blood on the sheath <laughs> it's maddie mogan that's damning so that's one thing the other dna attack is on the process of how also the the defense is not they're not saying that it's not brian's dna read the motion the motion says that they believe that the sheath was placed there how the dna comparison was made number one <laughs> there's nothing at all out of order with the dna testing it was done pursuant to on the sheath of the murder weapon in the bed with maddie mogan that there was there was kaylee was in that bed too That's damning. So and, and nobody could see it. Nobody could see this sheath except for fucking pain because he can see through people. Oh, that's one thing. The other DNA huh? attack is on the process of how the DNA comparison was made. Number one, there's nothing at all out of order. <laughs> there's nothing at all out of order. How does she have a fucking job? There's nothing at all out of order. With the process what we don't need you don't know the process we don't know the process nobody knows the process but you don't have a problem with the process how could you not and nancy answer me this how in the world do you have an opinion on the process when nobody knows the fucking process that's what the defense is asking for what was the process how did you go about this listen to this listen to this who is employing these people? DNA attack is on the process of how the DNA comparison was made. Number one, there's nothing at all out of order with the DNA testing. It was done pursuant to lab regimen. How do you know? How do you know, Nancy? No, <laughs> there's been nothing said about this. That's what they've been asking for. What is she in the world talking about? This is flat out lies. There's nothing wrong with the process. It's it's done pursuant to let, how do you know this? We don't know this, Nancy. Nobody knows this. We don't even know that answer. She doesn't know. It's impossible to know because that's what the defense is fucking asking for, Nancy. So that challenge is going to fail. It's going to fail. No, actually, you just failed. Your argument failed flat on its face. So much so that I think your mascara is running. 
the defense is also challenging the state trying to keep Koberger's family tree private so members of his family are not pilloried by the press and others. That's not what they're doing, Nancy. They said you can keep it private from all of us peons. Keep it, keep it all private from us. <clears throat> we the defense, <laughs> Ryan Goldberger, once you think that he can't know that. He already knows who his family is. It's because Joe Schmo blow when you pull out 27,000 people and how you got there. Like, I think I see your tells now, Nancy. You're gonna go itch your nose here. Oh, but there it is. Check it out, guys. Lana found it. Tell number one. One. Where does she do it? When Koberger was followed, DNA found on the sheath of the murder weapon in the bed with Maddie Mogan. That's damning. So that's one thing. <laughs> There you go. The other DNA attack is on the process of how the DNA comparison was made. Number one, there's nothing at all out of order with the DNA testing. It was done pursuant to lab regimen. So that challenge is going to fail. The defense is also challenging the state trying to keep Koberger's family tree private so members of his family are not pilloried by the press and others. But there <laughs> Touché, Nancy. are two DNA matches in this case. Number one, when Koberger was followed from all the way from WSU where he was. A he was followed now, Nancy. He was followed. I'm going to need I'm going to do a shot, Nancy. PhD student home for Thanksgiving. So now Nancy's, wait, she said Thanksgiving? It wasn't Thanksgiving. Did she just try to say Thanksgiving? Nancy, I try to play fair, but. Um, WSU, where he was a PhD student, home for Thanksgiving with his family. Ah, and Nancy, you got it all wrong, girl. Thanksgiving? No, girl. It wasn't for Thanksgiving, boo. It was for fucking Christmas, Nancy. Thanksgiving, he was still partying. this shit. I mean, by God. <laughs> gobble, gobble. That's funny. Jeez, Nancy. She must know a lot that we don't know. <laughs> Wild shit, man. Poconos. Poconos. The police watched the home. Oh, they did. They, they obtained abandoned DNA at that time. Abandoned DNA. That abandoned oh. DNA was from Koberger's father. It was matched to the DNA at the crime scene on the knife sheath. And that DNA match proved with a huge statistical number. That but Nancy, why were they following Brian Koberger all the way back to Thanksgiving? <laughs> Did Nancy just give a Freudian slip there? Were they after Brian Kohlberger actually Thanksgiving? And did she just Freudian slip us? You know what I mean? Did she just accidentally Freudian slip us? Who knows? Like I said, Nancy seems to know everything over here. Um, <clears throat> that the donor of the DNA on the murder weapon knife sheath had to be the biological son of Brian Koberger's father. Had to be. Wait, if they were following him all the way back all over there, why didn't they just get any of the abandoned DNA that Brian ever put out? Why do you have to go get his daddy's, Nancy? Who's your daddy? Hey, 
And yep. Koberger's father only had one biological son. So how do you, that Nancy, DNA how match. the fuck do you know that? Then you Nancy, they, they take Mr. the DNA. No, maybe yep. Mr. Kohlberger was tapping ass, okay, all through college. You don't know how frequently Mr. Kohlberger was getting some, Nancy. You don't know how many biological sons Mr. Kohlberger has had, Nancy. How would you know that, Nancy? Like, who even makes that comment? Ugh, please. You see Mr. Kohlberger. He is sexy as can be, Mr. Kohlberger. You know he's getting laid, Nancy. <laughs> I'm just kidding. He's a Catholic-going man. He's a good old Christian boy. Nancy, that's his only biological son because that man did not put his they figured out it's him and they build see that the, they figured out it's him that's our that's our problem nancy they figured out it's him how <laughs> how no oh, it's just shit man they figured out it's him yeah nancy they're just asking how a genealogical tree and they now trace the DNA on the sheath directly to Koberger from a buckle swab. How did you get the buckle swab? DNA taken from. How did you get this, Nancy? How did you get this? How did you get this? You don't get the buckle swab without the what? Without the what? The probable cause affidavit for an arrest, Nancy. From his saliva from his mouth so what i'm saying is there's two dna tests damning him they're not going to win on the dna challenge bullshit nancy I'm very very nancy true. i will bet you a stake okay i will bet you a stake nancy that they win on the challenge of the dna you know why because you nancy are the reason that they're going to win Whoever would go out and do a show like this and not know what, what in hell is going on with this case? Yes, about this prior arrest. Now, we know the prior arrest Look at this. Um, Look at this. was back in 2014. The DNA on the sheath directly to Koberger from a buckle swab. DNA taken from mm -hmm. his saliva we're playing pictionary mouth. so what i'm saying is there's two dna tests damning him they're not okay guys guess what the word is ready what are you doing well i'm playing pictionary and nancy grace is my teammate what's the word i have to show i get i get buckle swab that's what i have okay ready go <laughs> i know it i know it it's buckle swab <laughs> <laughs> the other team's like, cheek, smile, skin, face, buckle swap. <laughs> I'm going to win on the DNA challenge. Oh, I'm very, very curious about this prior arrest. Now, we know the prior arrest um, was back in 2014 for stealing his sister's cell phone. No way. <laughs> and it was Koberger's own father. Michael Koberger that turned him in. He called police and said that Brian Koberger had been struggling with drugs. We believe heroin. He had a drug addiction. He had just gotten out of rehab and rejoined the family. And one of the first thing he did, first things he did when he got back in with the family is steal his sister's. You know what, Nancy? I would love to see that report you're reading from because how in the world do you know what Brian Kohlberger did right when he got out of um, whatever uh, rehab? I'm sure he probably hit up a stripper. Maybe that was what he did. Maybe he was reading, I don't know, Patterson's new book. You're over here saying the first thing that he did when he got out of, um, a, a he just walked into his house. <clears throat> hey, mom, dad. Hey, sis. How's it going? Let me just take your phone and go sell it for drugs. No, don't you think that's probably what he did before? And that's why he actually went to rehab when his dad, you know, called the police on him. Don't you think that would probably be like what happened first? 
then it like goes that way, Nancy. But no, you know what? You have this intel that you know what the Kohlbergers are doing. And you knew that Brian, right out of rehab, he walked into that home and he stole his sister's cell phone. The fuck, Nancy? And people believe that you're reading from a piece of paper that probably says, here's Chris McDonough's name of his podcast. Here's Chris McDonough's name of his, I don't know, whatever the fuck he does. And you're acting like you're reading from a report from the police. <laughs> Nancy, this is why transparency always matters. Because my, my pretty little ass here, I would have showed that on good old Hector, the projector. Phone. Now, according to documents, he paid a friend 20 bucks to take him to a mall where he sells his sister's iPhone worth $400 for $200. What? For more drugs? For what? Why was the he stripper, Nancy? stealing a phone and selling it behind his parents' back, stealing from his sister? That's what all of the He's arrested. Do. They steal He's from their charged family. with theft. And he took advantage of a... Who do you want him to steal from, Nancy? So you're basically saying, Nancy, that him stealing a cell phone from his sister and selling it led... That is... that This is the catalyst that was like, what? Oh, my God, we should have seen this man to be a... A quadruple homicide slasher. Because he stole his sister's phone and stole it at the age of 20. You know what that tells me, Nancy? That would be the act of somebody that, that that's just, um, do you think that's a mastermind? Someone that has an iPhone that's like, has like traces left and right on it. Like the fuck he's a struggling, just what out of high school kid, 20 that what you said he has addiction issues. And so he sold it for money to go what buy more drugs. First offender program. And I've granted it myself to first offenders where if you complete your probation. So Nancy, you've granted it yourself. So you would have granted to this guy. I mean, why, it, it's, he sold a cell phone. His own dad turned him in for a cell phone. Don't you think that his own dad would turn him in for murder then, Nancy? If his own dad turned him in for that, don't you think that his own dad would, what, you know? or a course or your community service hours and it's your first offense and it's a misdemeanor it can be quote expunged erased and that's what he did and that is why it wasn't found originally so, and everyone thought he wait, had no criminal so history. nancy how did y'all find it how about that how did y'all find it if you can't if we can't find it who coughed it up the same law enforcement that was part of the arrest of Brian Kohlberger, the FBI gave it over to Jen Coffin Gobbler. How did y'all get the NCISI, whatever the hell y'all got? How did you get it? How did you get it? Because tell me it was not from an officer, right? Aren't the, why would they be giving you that? Well, he does. Not just a criminal history, but a history deriving out of a drug habit and preying on his own family. Preying on his own family. That's what we know right now. And I want to find out from you, <laughs> a veteran homicide detective, what that means to you. Well, it's interesting that the sister, when he was first arrested, uh, you know, they had the impression just before the arrest, uh, for the homicides here that they, that one of the sisters thought, well, he did it. And Wait, you know, there was what? a question within the family and she Wait goes a second. Out, Where are you getting this from? You were now you're now this is hearsay. Now I'm going to speak on hearsay here. Rested. Uh, you have a veteran homicide detective. Well, X who's, a veteran homicide detective. What that means to you. Well, it's interesting that the sister, when he was first arrested, uh, you know, they had the impression just before the arrest uh, for the homicides here 
that they that one of the sisters thought, well, he did it. <laughs> and, you know, there was a question. What in the fuck are you talking about? Where are you getting this shit from? This is unreal. Christmas, were you eating Christmas dinner with them? Were you, what is this? This is unbelievable. This, and if anybody wants to know why I'm doing this tonight, because this was going to be part of like the, the back end of the stuff that was going on tonight, but I reversed my order to, to help out um, uh, Marilyn. I mean, anybody would be nervous to come on, you know, and, and do a, an interview and whatever. But I had wrote in my community page that, hey, you know what? I wanted to play this and I wanted to roast the shit out of this because this is that effing bad. This is crazy is what this is. This is unbelievable. Like, I just want to play Jim Carrey again. Do you talk like a devil? How do you know what happened at Christmas dinner or Thanksgiving dinner as Nancy Grace thinks that this happened on Thanksgiving? Um, this is horrible. Within the family, and she goes out to check the car, remember? And so this is probably one of the incidences where if somebody has a drug addiction problem, you know, we used to call it chasing the needle, remember? Where if they're, you know, injecting heroin, they every four to six hours, they're going to need that drug. And so they go to any length possible, in this case, obviously, they... He steals his sister's cell phone, sells it for half price, and it's probably to support that addiction process or, or problem that he has. But Well, at least Chris said it's probably. <laughs> it's probably. I mean, nobody knows why this happened, but it's probably because to support his addiction habit. Now, if we move that forward, that pre-incident behavior tells us that he is capable of criminal behavior to a point where he will take it within the within the sanctuary of his own personal family. Um, and so as we as this case starts to unfold even further, um, you know what I think is crazy? How many people in chat here? We have 2000 people in chat. How many people in chat ever stole money from their parents when they were younger from out of a purse or a wallet? Because I wanted to buy those, you know, I don't know, Nike shoes or I don't know, whatever it was to, to go get your ear pierced, whatever it may be. Um, I took a little extra money out of the, the drawer to, cause, um, at school, oh yeah, my lunch money. I wanted to buy something. I mean, are you kidding me? So because you, the difference is, is that why didn't my family turn me in? Why didn't my family say, oh my God, you just stole from us. You just stole from us. Or, or why does it, um, Mr. Kohlberger went to the authorities. That's pretty cool. I think, um, that he went to the authorities. You know why I think he went, probably went to the authorities because it involved his daughter and his son. Okay. That's why I believe that he probably went to the authorities and they were of the age of like, you know, 20. Um, and if you're a dad and your daughter comes to you and tells you this, what are you going to do as a dad? Mr. Kohlberger was being a dad to his daughter. Okay. And, you know, but how many parents out there are, they keep it all in house and it's like, here, here's the money. Here you go. Here's the money. Go get yourself another iPhone and I'll clean this up. Not too many parents are calling the police on their children. Okay. It's a really hard thing to do. But Mr. Kohlberger did it, and I believe it's because it involved two of his kids. And the one that was the victim was a girl. And, you know, what are you going to do? Um, but he he did it. He did the hard thing. That's a very, very hard thing to do, and he did it. Okay? So now you're going to tell me that y'all are bringing this up from eight years ago because he stole his sister's cell phone, sold it for 200 bucks. His dad turns him in. He does the whatever program. It gets expunged. But how about, here's my question. How did you all get it? How did you guys get this information? Who gave it to you? I can't just call up and do a public request on this. Where did you get this from? Jennifer was so proud to have it. 
it won't surprise me, and I'm sure it won't surprise you, if other incidences, you know, start to surface where uh, the prosecution may already have those interviews uh, down somewhere. And that's going to tell us, you know, about the other side of him, the, the, the secret life of Brian Koberger. Uh, but I think <laughs> we're going to see incidents where people are going to say, mostly women, are going to come forward and say, look, you know, this guy was creepy at this party. He weirded me out, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Where Wait a second. That's kind of what I've been waiting for, Chris. He was arrested, let's just for easy math sakes, you know, January 1st, January, February, March, April, May, June, six months, six months. We can't get nobody to come forward saying they were watching him helicopter in that we get these broads that say that they did these TikTok dates or these, I don't even know, swipe right Tinder dates. And, um, but yet nobody can produce any proof that they cuddled with the dude, let alone, I don't know, let him whatever. This is wild. <laughs> We've waited six months. The police asked, Hey, if you know anything about this, Brian Colbert, I come forward. Well, and then some people are going to say, well, would you ever want to come forward and say that you were messing around with somebody that's, you know, alleged to have killed and stabbed four people? <laughs> I would <laughs> only if I had pertinent information. Okay. But there's no history of Dick. There is no history of anything. And this is wild that they say, well, it's only going to be a matter of time until this happens. What's well, been six months? When can we expect this to start happening? Okay. Oh, Marilyn said she's ready. Do you want me to call or do you want the link? Do you want the link or call you? She's probably like, I've had enough of Nancy. I'm, I'm ready to come on. <laughs> Call me. Okay. Ah, okay, cool. All right, guys, here we go. Let's see if we can do this loud. Hi. Hey, what's up, girl? How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. So um, this is Marilyn, everybody. Everybody say hi to Marilyn. They're, they're like, when I say say hi, like, I always feel like I'm talking to myself because I just look at the screen. Um, <laughs> That's okay. Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, hi, everybody. Um, I do appreciate you coming on. And I know that you're like, ah, you know, nobody wants to come on. Um, when it's their right. first time. And, yes, totally. And, you know, I have just a little reserves. I really do want to kind of give my perspective on everything. I think I kind of need to almost... Well, I, I was going to try to make it. I was. I, know what the word is. I just need to kind of compose myself and kind of prepare myself for like what I'm about to say. You know, I think about my family and I kind of think about how I want to present myself in this situation. Yeah, um, absolutely. You know. No, I, I totally 100 percent. Um, get all that and I'm totally behind all that in case anybody in chat doesn't know um, and that's watching uh, Marilyn you have a, a little baby girl um, so yeah. she's a new mom and um, yeah. how how is that like I because well I was a new mom like oh let's see it's been seven years now do you sleep at yeah. all do you sleep at all <laughs> <No. laughs> um, I, I remember when, like when she was born everyone would tell me like sleep when the baby slept and you know like at the first three months I never did that because you know you look around at your house you look around at all this shit and things you need to do when they're sleeping you're like oh my gosh I have time but now I feel like okay when she's napping I'm taking a nap with her because mm -hmm. I need it at this point <laughs> right I, I was never yes. as tired as I was and like because I think for me I was like you know, if you just, if you were tired, like, but you, if they wake up, you got to be there. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's everything's on their schedule, on their schedule. 
mm-hmm. it, you know, and like you said it, like you'd think like, okay, they're asleep. I can try to squeeze something in or, okay, here, I'll clean this or I'll do that. Yeah. Do a load of laundry or something just to feel a little productive when they're not needing that hundred percent attention. But right. I feel like oh, I've been getting more tired, you know, she's getting more mobile. So like my brain's everywhere and I'm constantly like I could turn around for a second and this has literally happened before I turn my head and in three seconds she had her hand in the toilet bowl <laughs> oh my it, it was not full of anything but I'm like okay this is gross like I can't even like turn around for a second and and think you're fine you're always getting into something and I'm like oh my gosh my brain yeah. is just like scrambled so well, we all appreciate you here at TNT um, for wanting to even, you know, um, to, to talk about. I know that me and you have been like, you know, texting um, and messaging each other. Um, but it was, it was, I, I've been covering the case. And when I came across it, as I told you, I was just like, I cannot believe what I just like witnessed. And I was like, oh my God, she talked about it, even like she was a new mom. And, um, so that's what drew, yeah. drew me into it because I, I guess you could say I'm a softy for moms. Um, but, mm-hmm. but I was like, okay, I just, I was like, I was kind of blown away because you, you've been friends with Emma or like you were, you, you, you've known her for a long time. You know? Yeah. I mean, you know, she went to my school, um, I don't even, I can't remember if she was like three or two grades like below me. And I never really talked to like underclassmen. Like, um, I always talked to upperclassmen. So I really didn't know her until I was in college, actually. And um, more of her friends, she started hanging out with more of like hanging out with. So it was kind of mutually we just kind of were like, Oh, I know of you, but I didn't really know you until those later years of high school. So after high school, I mean, and, and yeah, I, I didn't, my friends kind of, you know, went to different schools. Um, I maybe had like one or two friends that stuck around. So, and she was never in college. So when she was kind of just like in town, you know, I mean, she traveled a lot. She did her own thing. Um, and so I kind of like met her at a party one time and we kind of just ended up clicking. And I was like, wow, I, I knew of you in high school, but I didn't really know how much I related to yeah. you and like how, how like similar interests we had. And so, um, you know, I was kind of at a point in my life where, I got out of a relationship. So when, um, so you went to I Moscow, did, right? Moscow high school. Like, I did, yeah. Yeah. So did Moscow you grow up I there like your whole up. life? Were, are you like born and raised? Like, dude, this is where I've always like. Lived. Yeah. Yep. Totally. Totally. have been here my whole life. My parents have been here. Okay. Most of their life. Um, and yeah, I went to U of I for just like two years and then. I guess two and a half. I took kind of a break. When, Can when I about was that? Like, do you know, like what year? Like, was it like, um, cause when did you graduate? If, or if you don't mind saying, if you don't have to, like if I didn't know. If- I graduated 2017. So I started U of I 20, like 17 fall. And then I was done at U of I like 2019 spring. Okay. And then I ended up just taking, like a gap year and I I ended up going to Europe with my family for a few months and kind of just like resetting. Um, Did you like that? I I did. I needed it. You know, I was kind of in like the party scene and not hanging out with the greatest people. And I was in such a, such a negative relation, like relationship with someone. And so kind of just like going away for a little bit, kind of just reset my mind. And like, I felt, I guess, more comfortable coming back to Moscow and and I kind of started school again. And then that kind of when, you know, I reconnected with her a little bit more too was when I was finally living kind of on my own and, and I didn't really have, I guess, much like friends, you know, all my friends had moved away at that point. So is that what a lot of people do there? Because like, since you grow up in like, (laughs) 
like that. I'm just curious. I'm like, cause you either you hear people that stay there their whole lives or they like, they're like, they can't yeah. get wait like to get out of there. You know, I feel like for every small town anywhere, um, you know, you grow up there and, and you always dream of getting out, but I feel like it always bring like something brings you back, whether it's in 10 years and five years, whatever. And being here, like my whole life, I actually tried to go live down in Nevada for like a few months and it just didn't work. Everything kept bringing me back here. My family's here. You know, I, I know basically everyone in this town, like not everyone, but I know a very big, like majority. And so, you know, working here and now I kind of started a cleaning business. It just, everything worked out. Um, kind of how it was supposed to and I feel like now I have Aria and it's easier having a child when you have both grandmas in the town oh, for too sure. and for so sure. you know you know maybe in like three to five mm-hmm. years we might branch out and go to a new state you know if if the timing's right if it all works out but yeah. I don't know I think being in a small town there's almost what well, makes sense so, with everything that you said you know yeah and it I feel like, you know, yes, you grow up in that small town and you dream about getting out, <laughs> but something always pulls you back. And so I think I, I always dreamt of wanting to leave, but I haven't really made that push yet. And I don't feel like I need to yet. So, yeah, no, I, I, I agree. If mm-hmm. I, I think like everything that you said, it was right reasons. Like family is the number one reason, like a place isn't anything without people. Like you can go to like the Virgin islands. If you're there with nobody that you want to be there with, like I'd rather be in a shack with my best friends than on the Virgin mm-hmm. islands with people that I, you know, can't stand like, or by yeah, myself. You, you, you know what I mean? I like, y- yeah, you can, I'm the type of person that I can make anything what I want it to be. I don't care where I am. So mm-hmm. I totally can resonate with everything that you're saying. Like, and when you're saying that, Hey, yeah, I want to be, in Moscow because I got with my grand, you know, my parents, that's, those are the grandparents to my kid. Um, oh, yeah. so that's, uh, that makes total sense to me. I, I get on board with that. Um, yeah. so when you, you said you went to Nevada just for a little bit, did you go to like actually like Vegas, Vegas, or was it like the <laughs> skirts out? Like, I don't know. Yeah, we, did. we were really hoping to expand, um, my boyfriend has like his detailing business with his brother and they were really trying to like hope to expand and you know, that market down there is just crazy. And I don't think we really saw everything through. Um, when you're moving, you kind of like, you should have certain goals and you should at least have like a motive. And I think our motive was just like, we wanted out of this town for a little bit. So it seemed more of like a vacation. It didn't really work out how we expected, which was like totally okay. I mean, while we were down there, we had people up here being like, Oh, like, are you still doing detailing? on yeah. your detail? blah, blah, blah. So it's like, why were you, in- we were down there for kind of no reason, but well, that's why, that's what I saw. I was like, Oh my God. They, her, her boyfriend, and then they do detailing. They probably detailed Brian Kohlberger's car. It was a joke. It was like, yeah, look out. They probably detailed Brian Kohlberger's car. Um, so, so, so did you guys detail Brian Kohlberger's car? No. Um, <laughs> I've never even, I never even heard of his name until all this stuff happened. It's crazy because, yeah. you know, I actually live in Palouse. Um, Okay, so, like, where, like, how far is that from, like, like, I've I've heard, like, I've. It's actually a perfect in between, like, 15 minutes to Moscow, 15 minutes to Palouse. Or, I mean, sorry, Pullman. Oh, okay, so so you're kind of, like, in the middle of, either way. Yeah, it's totally right in the middle, uh, north from both towns. Because both towns are 15, like, driving from Pullman to Moscow is, like, 15 minutes as well. So, it's almost like this little triangle of. Like is it like city, a city but, in like Palouse or is it just like, like a farm? Like what is it? Is it like a little, a little town? It is a very, very, very small town. Like okay. smaller than Moscow, smaller than Pullman. Like it is teeny, maybe a thousand people here. I don't, I don't know much about this town. Isaac grew up in it. So it was yeah. nice to find a place and like to like raise Aria out here and, oh, that's cute. and where he was. Too. So, so that was nice. But 
no um it was crazy to even hear that you know what was that so when you yeah when you heard about like so you get like how did you first hear about even like the the murders at the school because that would be like you went there so did you do you know where that location is the u of i yeah well like king king road or like that little they call what greek greek row or whatever greek row king road yeah so um i had really only been on that road like maybe a handful of times i mean you can there's like a back way to like drive through campus to kind of get from one end of moscow to the like if you're coming through pullman you can kind of go on campus and get around like all the lights and crap you know the traffic so I have probably driven on that road like a thousand times in my life, but, um, there's, I think actually King road's more of like the side road off, but I, I had really only been on that road, like physically and stayed on that road at like a party, like one time. So just to kind of hear all of that, like on that campus was honestly pretty, pretty shocking and like nothing like this has ever happened in Moscow yeah. like like never like this is like like this made national news you know what I mean like no one no one would have expected that like yeah in, so in Moscow never never in a million years would I have ever expected that yeah that's why I did my research on it and I was like because you know they the thing that I thought was weird about it is that the when the the president the new like he was like a new president he said that one of the things he wanted to improve was student safety, security. And I was taken back by that because I did a bunch of research and I was like, dude, nothing happens out here. You know what I mean? Like, what is he talking about? Does that make sense? Like, why is he talking about the reason? Like his first thing is to like go and like make sure like the safety of students. I was just kind of taken back by that. And then this happened um, just shortly into his new uh, presidency with the campus um Mm. so that was so like when you heard this it was just like whoa what the hell this is wild and you did you so did you know any did you know any of the victims i didn't no Mm. no i i so i it sounded like a lot of them were um about to graduate or like in their junior year and i've been out of school for I guess now it would be like two and a half years. 2019 was like my last time I was in school. So yeah, like two and a half, almost three years. So no, I had not honestly been on to a campus party. Like I basically found out I was pregnant with Aria and um everyone everyone's by like, the way like commenting that they love the name aria for, they don't know if it's from game <laughs> they, they just they're like giving you props they're like oh my god i love that name so oh, i just i saw so that and i wanted to like say something about it because i was like yeah <laughs> my my neighbor named her baby aria is it from games really? of thrones oh yeah god. or is it, it doesn't seem like a very common name but it was also a name me and isaac like didn't know anyone named that and we were like we just have to do it like it's just perfect it just works so yeah, yeah thank you but so, no, yeah i just wanted um, to say that i saw it so I, I was like, it's very it's very saddening to hear and and you know my heart goes out for those families i couldn't even imagine you know any of that but no. i didn't i didn't know i didn't even really have friends that even knew any of them either it was a very big shock to me and they were they are a little bit younger than me too so i i didn't really talk to you know underclassmen not even at u of i i honestly barely talked to anyone at u of i i was there for i kind of kept to myself <laughs> <laughs> um i did a lot of online too like that's like my last semester there I honestly have one more year and I should be I should be having my degree but I kind of kind of stepped back from that and I'll I'll get back to it someday but I think you have good reason to when you get a baby you're just like it's a lot I mean I give props to all anybody yeah anybody that's had a baby and doing school and um then working I mean that's just that's a lot so I I give them props Thank you. Um, Thank you. So wait, if, if I was to show, um, I, 
it's totally your call. I was going to show some of like the body cam footage to like look at that um, uh, from that night. Like, because you were, when, we, when I first like reached out to you, I, it was like, a, I was like, hey, do you even know about this? <laughs> And you're like, well, yeah, actually somebody sent it to me. Like, but you did like, if nobody would have, if this would have never seen the day of light, like the body cam footage, would you have ever mm -hmm. known like what happened that night? No, I would have never known like anything because, you know, actually my friend moved back from California recently and she was the one that found these, these videos. And, um, if she wasn't even in town, I don't think she would have even seen them. And, and I'm, I'm even surprised that, you know, she, I don't think she necessarily wanted to show me. I think she was like, the first thing she said to me was she was like, okay, so don't be mad. <laughs> just like, you can't even bring that up and say, don't be mad. And, you know, I wasn't even necessarily mad. I was a little more like kind of hurt. Yeah. And, and kind of confused, like at the same time, I was like, hmm. um, I didn't even really know how to respond. And yeah, no, if these had never, like if that body cam, just like footage was like not even on, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I would have never known that she just kind of like, you know, threw me under the bus like that. So, so, so your friend was like, Hey, you need to see these because, or like, yeah. So like, Let's just like, yeah, let's back up that night. You guys were all hanging out because you were in her car. She was taking you to her, to your car. She, you were in her car. She was taking you to yeah. your car. Yeah. It, you know, that actually, that was the night me and Isaac, my boyfriend, um, it was like February 12th and we had a night without Aria, you know, we went and had a really nice dinner and then, okay. um, he, he had said that some of his friends were at the bar, like Kent and Drake and just like a bunch of his friends. And so we were like, oh, well, we had a nice dinner. Like, let's go say, hey, we don't have Aria. Like, we have probably like, like, that was like probably our fourth time. Being like, out without the baby. Night. Yes. <laughs> because yep. we're just so anxious without her sometimes. And that just wasn't like normal for us to like go out on on dates for like a whole night, you know? And so I actually ran into her like at, at a bar, um, hanging out with like, you know, Isaac was talking to his guy friends and, and she ended up being there. And I was like, Oh my gosh, like I haven't <laughs> seen you since man, like before Halloween. So like that was February. So it had been, it had been months. Dude. It was like, I had not seen her in literally months. And I was like, Oh my gosh, how are you doing? Because you know, she, she's from Moscow. Her families live in Moscow, but she was always like in Seattle or, you know, traveling somewhere else. I, I don't even know really like where, where she hopped around to, but that was, it was nice to see her because, you know, I had Aria and I didn't really like see many friends and I wasn't going out and drinking anymore. So, um, it was just nice to kind of see a friend that, um, I used to see like a little more regular. So, so you hadn't seen her in like a while. Yeah. Yeah. It was like months. Like I'm pretty sure I called her Halloween night. Halloween like was like the last time we had like a night without Aria because, yeah. um, where our, our wait, Halloween of like 2021 or like 2022. Yeah. 2022. So, and yeah. then, and then you saw her on, Fe well, that night, February 12th of 2023. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And so like. Yeah, it was. And I actually, I actually didn't even see her Halloween. I called her. Okay. Because she was in town and I ended up not even seeing her. I was like, Hey, well, if you want to, like, we kind of had like this fun Halloween, like costume party out with Isaac's friends and. It was super yeah. chill and really fun, and um, I invited her to it, and she said she might come, and, and she never did because she was, you know, busy. So I, I'm guessing it might have been even, like, September that I – That you saw, saw her, her last. last. And yeah. so so you guys just you, – you go out and have your nice dinner, and then did she – because I think – well, she says that you guys went to, like, Emporium, like, 
or so timber timber impo- important yeah so we we started at timber and that's actually where my car was um it's going timber yeah. it's going down like that it's going down. yeah is it like a club um, you know no um okay i was timber gonna actually pretty cool because it's got like a bar like upstairs and you can see it and then like it's got almost food trucks in it um oh. Where is that? So that's in uh, Pullman? Yeah, you can go with like a burger. You can go get some tacos. You can go get some like, um, like it had like a poke, um, like, like bar where you go get sushi and poke bowls. Oh, really? So yeah, it was like almost. That's interesting. Yeah, it's almost like a little food truck like area. And and then they had a bar there too. So, but you know, anyone can go there. It's actually very family friendly. They have like a really cute. Um, and then that's, that's the timber place, right? That's the timber place. That's where my car was. Okay. We ended up going onto campus, which is where Emporium was. And so, so Emporium's on campus. Yes. Emporium's on campus. Okay. That is more of, I don't know. You, you wouldn't know this. Is it like a nightclub? Um, like a dance club or is it like a bar you know you know like what's yeah. do they have like a dj like a yeah definitely a dance club definitely a dj it used to be like the old stubble fields which was like such back in the day um stubble like field. the club that everyone could go to so it's actually a new bar they kind of like rebranded it basically um i that was honestly like my first time going there um because you know like I said, like, just yeah, you're just not. Well, once you have a baby, I'm telling you, you just don't go out. Like that's just that's life. You don't. Well, like maybe a dinner and you have like a nice drink, like one drink, and then yeah, <laughs> and then you're done. So, yeah. but yeah, no, I I I'm surprised I lasted that long that night. Um, so because you know that's the other thing is we don't sleep much, and so when I can't sleep, I take advantage of that. <laughs> so you were with her there and she and you're were you just like hey will you give us a ride to my car is that how that is that how that um, worked kind of we um from timber everyone was like oh we should go to emporium and there's a few other bars like on campus and so, like a nightcap or something um, like, like, kind of yeah like a lot of those bars stay open until like two I think, like, Timber, I think, stayed open until 11. I think that's really why we left, because Timber was closing. Yeah, because I was looking at the um, time of this. I was like, what time did she get pulled over? So she got pulled over at 2 a.m., I think, or, like, just right, right before 2 a.m.? That- yeah, yeah, somewhere around then. So I think I think it was Timber was closing, because this wasn't – I don't think this was, like, a weekend day. Because I think they're a little, oh, I think they're open later on weekend days. I really don't know their time, but I'm pretty sure we left Timber because we were like, okay, well, we can't stay here anymore. Um, so let's go to a different bar. So we went on campus, and actually, my brake light was out, um, and I didn't want to drive my car on campus. So she she offered to drive us. Um, it was me and Isaac and his friend, and we went to Emporium. We actually, I think, went to V Hall too. Man, this was such a long time ago. I'm trying to remember, but I think it was just those two bars we went to. And um, honestly, I don't even remember if we really. No, we did go into Emporium, but yeah, around that time it was closing, so we didn't even stay. We were mostly at V Hall for a little bit, and then we went to Emporium, ended our night at Emporium, and then I didn't have my purse I didn't have like my jacket I didn't have anything so I'm freezing I just have my ID and my phone um because I can slip my ID like in my phone case Mm -hmm. so um and Isaac had the card for the money and so I was like okay well would you just take us back to my car um and I need I need to grab my things like I was planning on going home that night and then we did get, you know, I got a little lit and so did Isaac. And so his brother lives in town. So we just decided, okay, well, why don't we just go stay with your brother? Um, yeah. And so 
that that was our plan, you know, and I was like, I just need to grab my stuff. I'd like to get to my car. And then that's kind of how, how that ended up happening. Was, so, so yeah, like, we're driving back to Timber to go to my car to get your stuff. Yeah. Because like you, so from Timber though, to get to Emporium, she, was she at Timber and she was like, Oh, you guys can just ride with me. You guys want to go to Emporium. And so that you just rode with yeah. her to there. Okay. And then, yeah. Yeah, because we didn't have dinner at Timber. We had dinner somewhere else. And then, you know, Isaac's friends were like, oh, we're at Timber. You should come by and grab a drink. And so when we got to Timber, um, he was seeing his friends. And then that's when I just, like, ran into Emma. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm so glad I ran into you. I haven't seen you in forever. Like, I don't have Aria tonight. Like, let's hang out if you have time, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, because that's how that I would. The that's normal. That's the that I had of hanging out with her from Halloween. So I was like, I'm going to take advantage of like hanging out with you tonight. Cause I haven't seen you in months. <laughs> so you hadn't seen her in months. And then the, even like the time before that, that you would have seen her, you didn't see her in months kind of, you know what I mean? Does yeah. that, does that make sense? Like, so you probably yeah. only saw her a couple times in that short, like what over a six month period, you saw her what a couple times. I, so like from February, I didn't see her until before like the last October, like, because I tried to see her in October, um, Halloween night. I was like, come to this party. Like, you know, there was another night we didn't have baby, like come hang out with us. And I never, I never heard back from her. And so I probably like from this February, like 2023, I probably honestly hadn't even seen her until or since like September 2022. Yeah. I would imagine yeah. because I didn't see her for Halloween and it's, it was almost like, it was almost like before Halloween, um, you know, she, I would kind of see her in stints. Like she would like kind of let me know, like if she was in town or I'd see her snap and I'd see her, you know, either post a story and it had a filter on it being at like Pullman or Moscow or something. And I'd always swipe up and say, Hey, are you in town? Like, yeah. let's hang out. Like, I haven't seen you in forever. And, and she was also kind of the friend that would be really cool and be able to like come over to my house. Like, you know, even when I did have Aria and, and she would love to like, just come like hang out with me. Like it didn't have to be going out to a bar. Like she could come and sit down and, and just like catch up with me because I just didn't, you know, my friend who just moved back was in California. My other best friends, like over, like, um, on the other side of Washington, like in Seattle. So for me, it was, you know, she was kind of there for me, like when I needed her, mm -hmm. which you know, sucks now, but, um, it, it was nice to have that. And, and I wish it was, I wish it was like, I don't know, as real as I, I thought it was, you know, that's, that's exactly, exactly. That's, I mean, well, I just to, so let's, let's go back to like this, like, well, actually like the night. So you, you guys get pulled over and were you like, holy shit, oh my God, we're getting pulled over. Like, that's what I'm always like. I'm always yeah. like, oh, my shit. There's We're getting pulled over. <laughs> that's what yeah. me. I've been like, so, holy shit. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Um, and did she say anything? Like, I, was she? were you just like, was it? And you guys didn't travel that far. To, I, I mean, it was a quick, like, no, you know what I mean? Maybe, like, a mile and a half. <laughs> yeah. So you only had to drive a I, mile and a half. Yeah. And, like, okay, so when he pulled you over and he says... Like, hey, I pulled you over because you, like, I think it was, like, that she ran that light. I hear, like, I just want to, yeah. is that what happened? Is that what he said? Because you guys were, yeah. like, you were, like, so polite. I, I thought everybody was really polite. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, honestly, I had, I had stopped drinking um for, like, the past two hours because I was, like, okay, if I'm, if I was going to even drive to, like, Isaac's brother's house, like, I need to, like, you know, drink water. I need to stop drinking. And, like, yeah, exactly. I wasn't going to all the way up loose even even if I sobered up like enough but I needed to sober up enough where I felt comfortable um 
just driving like even a few miles. And I think that's what was hard about Emma. And you know, my dad always told me never get in a car when someone's drunk, blah, blah, blah. And, and she honestly, like, I don't know. She made it seem like she really wasn't that drunk. She blew, obviously, like yeah. enough to be drunk. But maybe, maybe it was the loud music. Maybe it was just the fact I wasn't really paying attention to what she was drinking. And I mean, I know that's not my fault, but you know, she said, "I'm, I'm fine. I'm going to drive." Yeah. And, and she did fine. But then, yeah, yeah that light turned yellow and she sped up and then it was red and the cop was like literally right there so he just happened to be he just happened like the cop just happened to be at the intersection yeah yeah and so like he saw that and then he pulls you know her over and um Mm -hmm. and uh so like what were you thinking i was was stressed but like i i guess i was more stressed for her because i was like shit i hope you can talk yourself I hope out you of can this. act. Yeah. Like, like I hope that I hope yeah, yeah. I hope you can act like not drunk. I hope like, you know, because the thing was too is we had Isaac and his friend in the back and, and they were, you know, pretty lit, which is fine. They weren't driving. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> but, that's exactly what she said. She's like, I'm just driving them to their car. Which is the truth, yeah, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, totally. So she truth. wasn't lying yeah. about that. Like she was like just no. giving you guys, you know, a ride. Uh, she was just yeah. more, I guess you could say, well, I mean, so she ends up getting out of the car. Does she like, you again, don't answer anything you don't want to answer. Like, I'm not like that. But like, so when yeah. she gets out, obviously, like they, that's what they do. They're like, we're going to give like you these tests or whatever. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. And you know, I don't necessarily know like all the rights when, when things like this happen, but you know, where she kind of fucked up. Oh, sorry. I don't know if I can say that. You're you're good. good. Okay. Um, where she just kind of messed up was when he was like, how much have you had to drink tonight? She said, not enough to drive. (laughs) Where I'm just like, oh my God. Were you like, wait, what was that? And that's, I listened to that sentence. You're just screwed. Like by this point, you're screwed. Like you shouldn't have said that. You should have said, I haven't had any to drink. And then they should have just either proceeded like, with the eye test or they have you get out and do like a walking test like like you at least have some rights and necessarily like yes i ran a red light but but yeah like he like, he immediately came over and asked her how much she had a drink yeah. i mean it was like oh yeah like th- th- and, and see that's what i thought was interesting about it is because it was based on like he didn't pull her over because she was going left or right of center it was like, do you know why? Just running a red light. Yeah, like, exactly. Anyone does that even when they're sober. Like sometimes yeah. I've done that before. You know what I yeah, mean? That's... When it's yellow, sometimes I speed up. Sometimes I slow down. And and yeah, with that, he was kind of like in- not antagonizing, but almost like trying to poke to see what she would say. And she said the wrong. She said something that was like, "Okay, get out of the car and let's do some tests." Because you know, by that point. She basically just said, "Oh yeah, I've drank tonight, but not enough to like not drive." <laughs> yeah, everybody that ever oh. saw, like when you saw that, I'm just like, "Wait, what did she just say?" Yeah, I do. yeah, <laughs> I drank, but not enough to not drive. <laughs> it's just like, Emma. like who the hell says that? Oh right, my God, dude. So she gets out. Oh. Um, are we? So are you watching like YouTube? If I was to, like play a clip, um. Of, oh, here, okay did you see her counting yeah. were you able to like okay so where she was doing her counting and we're like oh god you were were you able to like hear her count you know honestly like from being in the car i i don't even think i remember even hearing like anything like from that night like watching okay. all these videos i was just shocked like i don't remember even her really doing a ton of different tests like until the cop came to me and was like, okay, so we're booking your friend. I'm like, oh, great. It was, we were kind of in the car and, you know, it sucks the most with Isaac was kind of freaking out. He was like, Emma shouldn't have this DUI. Like, like it was like, she shouldn't have been driving. Like, 
if anything, I should have had the DUI. And I'm like, babe, that's not really how it worked. Like you weren't. He, 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 he feels, went, like, he feels so guilty though, guy. because she was driving you. Right. Or he, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And like, you know, she, at that point, she was like a good friend kind of. And, and he did, he felt really bad. Like, and I respected that a lot of for him too, yeah. you know, just to like, that's how like, anybody, oh, I mean, like, it's conscious. That's and like, he was like, you need to go bail her out like right now. Um, you know, like we can't let this happen to her. Like this fucking sucks. Like, let's just figure out like what we can do. Like as soon as this hot, like as soon as she's booked, like we need to go to Colfax. Like he was like about to literally walk there. And that's like 30, 20 miles. I'm like, Oh my gosh. I'm also going to grab a charger really quick. So my phone doesn't die. Okay, honey. Again, those of you guys who are joining us, TNT, um, Marilyn's on the phone, and Marilyn was Emma Bailey's passenger during the DUI. Um, this made a bunch of headlines with, oh, my God, everybody wants to run with the whole, you know, Emma Bailey, D, drugs. Um, so um, I wanted to talk, though, to Marilyn and approach her as a mom, like mom to mom, like, wow. After you would have seen this video because she would have never known that any of this existed if this video never comes out, meaning, and we're about to get into that, which is Emma threw her under the bus and was like, everything that's in the car is um, Maryland's. So I just was, I was blown away by that, knowing that yeah, Marilyn. So was I. Yeah, oh yeah, I was just gonna say I didn't know if you were back yet. I was just giving the viewers a a recap of anybody that just came in. Who, hey, this uh, is Marilyn and blah blah blah. But um, it's um, it, it. So did you get to plug in your phone? <laughs> I did. I okay, okay, good. Because I, I I know what that's like too. I left, but but um. I did keep talking for about like 10 more minutes. So. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's nice of him. Well, here, I wanted to just show you really quick. So like, were you, so you weren't really kind of able to hear her or watch her do any of her testing, like when she was like counting. Cause I was like, wow. No. Okay. Um, but once well, here, I, um, cause once I, I watched the videos, then I was like, oh wow. <laughs> she was like 14, 14. Right. <laughs> like, when she was like, she said that number and I was like, wait, what's going on? Here, if you're able to see, um, well, because I felt that she, I felt that she kind of like got hosed on the whole, like, um, you know, when she was supposed to talk to that lawyer, like he should have been advising her not to blow and, you know, just like, well, I'll, t I'll take it from there type of thing. Um, yeah. But if you're able Did to. You me, right? Wait, what'd you say, honey? Did you say, I'm sorry, did you share that link with me? Can I watch it? Yeah, yeah, if you hit like the, if, yeah, if you hit the link, you should be able to, sh you'll be able to, like, see, like, the live in progress. As That's long cool, as, yeah. like, are you on, um, yeah, since you're not on, it may give feedback. It should be good. Um, I'll mute on this end. But I was just going to play this part where she was in, because I didn't know how much your friend showed you, where, when Emma goes into this area that is, like, this cop kind of puts her back in this room and oh. remember I was telling you, I was like, have you ever seen this part where she like, looks like she takes something here. I was just going to play it so you could see it. I don't know if you're at that. Did you hit the link? I did. Yeah. Okay. Here, let's see. Like, let's see if it gives any feedback here. I'm going to hit this. Okay. There you go. Okay. So like he puts her in. Right, now, see the chair. I'm going to grab our paperwork and I'll be right back in. Okay. Yeah, but I, know, I know what you're talking about. Do you want to resend maybe the link really quick? Oh, yeah. Did you not? Oh, yeah. Here, I can I can resend the link. Did it not work? Okay. It didn't. No. Okay. Here, hold on. Let me send you. Um. Okay. Um, which one? Okay, that was the other one. Let me see. Okay, there we go. Let 
Okay. I just sent it to your, I, well, I texted it to you. Is that work? Yeah. Totally perfect. Okay. Cause then what you can do, I think if you're, you should be able to like touch it then. But here, this is like the part, this is the only part where I was just like, did you ever see this? Cause I, we were all having a debate on how this all played out. Okay, which, yeah, I can see it. Oh, you can't. Okay. Okay. Good. good. Now check this out. Mm -hmm. So this guy lets her out of the cuffs. Um, by the way, do you know that guy on screen? Like I, I swear like people, everyone was just look at all these cops standing around. Like, or are they cops? I have no idea, but like, I'm like, just people are getting brought in one after another. It was just, it was pretty wild. Yeah, uh, I don't even know how booking works. And this is all like in the Whitman County, I think at um, Colfax. So yeah. Yeah. So here, can you see, okay. So he, he lets her out of these cuffs and then he takes his camera. I'm going to grab our paperwork and I'll be right back in. Okay. And so what he does is he takes his camera off right here and he sits it down right there. She takes the tissue. Okay. So she, she just, do you see how she grabbed that tissue? Let me back up yes. right to there. I think you're on just a good time. So right here, he's going to take his um, camera off. And right there, she takes the tissue. So I kind of pause yeah. it. Okay. So then she takes the tissue. She puts it in her other hand. And she goes back and she reaches out of an area. And then she it's doing this while the camera's on her, passes it to the other hand, and then puts it in the garbage. You see that? It, did you Were you able to see how? Yeah. And I was like, I was like, that's when I said, I was like, did you see her grab her ass in the video? And you're like, no. And I was like, oh, don't worry. I'll show you. And so that's what we were all like, cause she did it. And I'm just shocked. I don't know if she noticed like what did he put this here? Um, but yeah, she like made, you know, some type of a pass with the, the toilet paper to basically. Yeah. Know. I honestly I didn't even notice that when I was like, I don't even think I really watched these videos because at that point I was like, I didn't give her. <laughs> and just so everybody that's like, well, new that, that came in, I want you guys to see what we all saw. And then I was just like, I can't believe that she just said this, which was right yeah. here. She says, oh yeah, about her phone. And she's like, this isn't my phone. Do you recall that? Did she like... Sh when the cops came back, they were like, "Here's so can what I my get her before she goes to Colfax." Yeah. Like you're like all worried about like how She's do I licensed and clear. Her? And they did a licensing. Oh, phone? Yeah, did you not see that part either? I didn't realize. I thought. So check what like, she. Well, I, this I is what she was, says. Okay. Let's, let's see how she says it. We'll like let her do like the little talking here, but. Young first to come off. Yes. Edward Mary Mary Adam Middle M Mary one two one nine zero zero female item. Okay, and I have your ID. Oh, do you have my? Can I, I grab it for you or? I, no, I have your ID. Okay, okay. Okay. Yes. I just wanted to. ID. I just, ID. Yep. I just want. Sorry, to grab this your, is like the first time I've I just wanted to grab your so I want to make sure. I just wanted to grab your phone if you had it in the I car. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. She has no sober drivers. She has no phone. Is this her phone? Yeah, that's, that's what she, she said. said. Oh, she just said it's. She doesn't have a phone with her. But is that your phone? Marilyn says that's yours. Oh, oh, yes, yeah, sir. I thought I lost at the club. Okay, does that look right? Yes. Okay. Okay, so she says she she thought she lost at the club. I get it though. Like she doesn't. Basically, she's like, this is what anybody would do here. She doesn't, she's basically not wanting anything to do with her phone, right? She's just like, I don't want to have my phone. I mean, that's just, that's clear as day for whatever reasons. Um, but that was her phone, right? Like, the, mm -hmm. yeah, I can't remember if, um, I can't remember if one of the cops like had asked, oh, is this like her phone or if they just grabbed it, you know, out of her seat because. Yeah, she had her phone, her wallet. She had everything there. So when I noticed that, like, when the cop asked her, that's what I was confused about. The cop asked, like, oh, do you have anything, like, in your car? And then she goes, everything in the car is Marilyn's. And 
nothing. Oh wait, yeah. When did these. wait? When did she? Yeah, like, that doesn't she say that next when she comes back over? She's like everything. Did she say that before the phone? I think she says that before the phone. I can't necessarily even remember oh, yeah, when here. she said that. Here, of course, if they can find a ride. Or... No, no. That's right. Okay. One will be appointed for you. Oh, what does a DUI look like? Like, I don't understand. Like, we're... I've never, I've never had a DUI, so I don't know. We'll explain all that when we get there. So we're going to go to okay. Pullman Police Department, and that's where we go through the DUI process. Okay. So we're going to go back here to my car. Do you, Do you remember how many cops were there? Like, were there like a shit ton of cops? Like, I see all these cops around here. Oh my gosh. Um, was there like a lot of cops yeah. there? There was four. There was like, there was two different cars and like two in each car. So there was two different cars and then two in each car? Yeah. So they had so four cops. Total. Four cops. And then they ask her here, I think there. is where she says if you have any. Is this your car? Yes. Okay. So if nobody in the car is sober to drive, what do you want us to do? Um, so everything in the car pretty much is Marilyn's. Okay. And then and Marilyn's in the car. Yeah. She's okay. in the front. Okay. So that's her stuff. Okay. So if no one in that I, car, I, I just drove them um, home. Okay. So it's her car. No, it's my car. It's your car. Okay. Yes. So if nobody can drive, can I safely park your car in the parking lot here? Of course. If they can find a ride. No. So like right there, when you heard this, were you like, oh my God, she's, she tried to say that everything in the car was my, like, did you take that as like, were you taken back by that? Like, obviously your friend I brought was, this to your attention because you didn't know little, about it. I was honestly a little confused because I didn't have anything in her. Like I had nothing in my, like no, none of my personal belongings were in her car. Like that was the whole reason we drove back to my car was because all my stuff was in my car. I didn't that I know when I go out to like different bars, I always lose things. My wallet. I've literally lost my wallet before going shopping. Like <laughs> I am just very bad at like holding on to my things. And especially when I start drinking, you know, you move around a lot and you don't remember where you put things. That's like, it was like a number one reason why I leave my things in my car and I always take my ID with me and put it in my phone with my debit card, whatever. And so that was the whole reason we went back down to Timber and why she ran the light and and everything like that was because we were going to get my stuff from my car. Like I was wearing a pretty small dress, you know, I dressed nice for our Valentine's date, whatever. And and I just wanted my stuff before we went to stay at Isaac's brothers. So I was very, very taken back. Very like, huh? Okay. So yeah. Why, why would you have said, you know, like what was, what was the point? Of yeah. Like, yeah. That? Like, why are you even mentioning what's, what's in the car? Like he didn't even, yeah. he didn't even yeah. ask. He didn't even ask. Um, mm -mm, no, dude. Right. Yeah. No, he just wanted to get her things. Because... Yeah. Yeah. He was just like, what can I, if, if, if nobody can drive, is it okay if I park your car over in the parking lot? Like, that's what he asks. I mean, she's obviously out of it, but he doesn't say yeah. what's in the car that's yours. She just immediately no. goes to that. And, and yeah. that's when I was just like, okay, she's completely. How did the cops that but okay <laughs> yeah and then and then even if you watch the rest of it the cops are like okay hey we'll give you a ride to your car to get your thing you know what i mean like it was well and they actually one of the cops walked we were literally in walking distance to my car and so one of the cops literally walked me to my car mm -hmm. grabbed all my stuff with me and and they ended up driving us to where we were staying so and so they were like they were cool with it they're like we're gonna make sure that you guys are okay yeah, yeah. Yeah, totally. And it was they were super cool. There was no weirdness. There were it, you know, you're just like, well, thank you. And yeah. um yeah. and then so did you so did you did you call people? Again, you don't have to like answer any of this. I'm just curious of like, were you guys like, okay, do we have to call somebody to let her know? How do we get her? How do we go and get no, her? Because you asked him okay. you asked him. Yeah. 
when I um when I was ta- when we were talking when I was I guess talking to the cops by the end where I was like so how are we supposed to get her he was like you can get her at 4 a.m you know you have, yeah. you have to be in there booking takes four hours whatever and so we ended up going home or where we were staying I fell asleep until like five six and I think I ended up texting her and I was like hey are you like out did someone come to get you and she said I thought her mom had come to get her yeah. so but then we didn't have to worry about it you know what I mean because that was one thing was we were pretty worried like oh my gosh we need to wait four hours and go get her like that sucks that our friend has to sit in jail for four hours when you know we were all we so, were all drinking like that could have been any of us so you so. cared like you cared that this happened and you you texted her yeah and and she yeah. did she get back to you where she like I, I I got out or I'm here or I'm okay or did yeah, you ever yeah, hear from she her? Said she was fine and she got home. I don't know. I am not a hundred. Did she sure ever ask you? Did, was she like, "Hey, did they search my car? What they do? Where's my car? Anything?" You know, I think she said. Um, or was that like know, I don't even so far? Like, was that. it? You know, I think she said. Um, Oh man, I don't even know because I'm not sure if she was even able to take her keys. I think the cops said that they just were leaving her car there. Like, yeah, yeah, they They left it there. But she, I, I didn't know if maybe like she wouldn't have known. Um, well, I think they told her. I think they had told her like, or I think they told me like, we're just gonna leave the car here. And I think she. I think she grabbed her keys or the cops grabbed her keys. I don't mm-hmm. know. She never yeah, they asked had me. Um, I'm pretty sure she was like, nope, I'm out. Um, I'm going to go get my car tomorrow or something. So she had gotten picked up by someone. I have no idea really who, but. Yeah. And, uh, the, and then like from like that, like it was just like, um, did had you talk to her? Like, like. That happens February, you know, what, 12th in the morning. Um, mm-hmm. And then basically she gets arrested then within like a month kind of, of like with that Caden Young, uh, Demetrius stuff, like somewhere else. Had you talked to her before that at all? Or was did you not talk to no, her? No, I, I had not talked to her at all since that. I honestly didn't really even know like what she was doing or even if she was in town anymore or – or anything I think um after that night you know I got really busy with work and my weekends were pretty full so I wasn't I wasn't necessarily like talking to her really that much anymore I'd have to like even go look and see if like we had messages because Mm -hmm. I am pretty sure when was it that you were showed these videos do you remember like was it Cause I think when do we when do we get these videos? I'm trying to look at the date here. Cause it was like months afterwards, right? Let me take a look. Let me see this date of this video that I gotta put out. I'm just curious on this date. Let's see. Yeah, it was not that long ago. March on March 21st, 2023. Okay, yeah, that's that. But when did this video come out? Yeah, no, I have not talked to her um um since then, and. Oh, April 9th is when the video came out. So, like, you would have went, like, all of, like, February, March, and then April 9th is the video. Yeah, I think I saw it, like, four or five days after that. My friend had shown me, like, four or five days after it was posted. So, you hadn't talked to her, okay. Mm-mm. And then... Um, it was pretty normal for us, you know? Yeah, yeah. Oh, totally, because you hadn't talked to her, like, so you yeah. hadn't... And then you see this... Um, Mm-hmm. And you're just like, your friend was just like, you probably need to see this because of what she said in the video, or was yeah. it like, yeah, yeah, it was because of what she said about me, and then just the fact that you know she knew I was friends with Emma, and um, I think she was also trying to be protective of the fact that you know I I would have done not anything for her, but I really like bent over backwards for her as a friend and I, I would have and and she didn't give me that same respect you know she totally tried to just f me over in any way she really could have which... because because anything that would have been in that car had they had searched it she was going to try to say it was yours yeah yeah totally which 
could have been anything in that car, you know? Yeah. Anything. And we talked, anything you said, you me, me and you talked, you said, like, yeah, no, I'm not doing drugs. Mean that's why I, I wasn't hanging out with Emma to do drugs. That's not what this was no, about. You I, just, <laughs> when I, when I started talking to you and we started talking about this, I was like, holy shit, talk about like, because anybody that would see this video, you know, you're thinking like, oh, that's, that's her girl. They hang out all the time. You know what I mean? Like who else is, you know, and then you get the yeah. whole story of something like, and she knew that you had a daughter, right? You had like a brand new baby and. Oh yeah. I totally do all of that. Like she definitely came and hung out with me. Like when I was pregnant sometimes. Um, and, and you know, when I was craving food, she was definitely the person I'd go eat with, you know, like, you know, when you have a friend that yeah. just, like, is down to go a date to go eat food that that was kind of her so so wait can we put this to rest like she okay she was a doordash driver or no or did she ever be honestly i don't actually know if she really did any doordashing um isaac did a lot of doordashing when ari was first born because it was it was good extra money on the side and he was doing an, a remote job before, you know, we full sent our business, but, okay. um, talked about it to her a lot. It was just like, you know, if, if you want to make some money and like, you know, not be bored all the time. Cause I think that was one thing is she hated be, being over here in Moscow. Like it was boring. She, that's why she liked traveling, you know, and I get mm -hmm. it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, she grew up in the same town as me, but you know, Isaac was saying, like, look, like, it's honestly a really, like, nice way to make money. And he'd go dash if she came to hang out with me so we could have our girl time. So, you know, he kind of encouraged her to to, to do it. Um, but I also really don't know if she ever followed through with with actually actually doing it. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Yeah, I was when I saw that and. So then you haven't, have you talked to her since? Like, no. <laughs> so you never saw this and you were, you were never like, cause this would be me. I'd be like, what the fuck, Emma? I saw that video. <laughs> what the fuck yeah. is she saying? <laughs> you know, like, but you never, you've never even done that. But I didn't want to. I was like, you know, she's got to see this and she's got to know exactly how I feel about it. Um, wow. And just how fucked up it is. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was, well, I, it was beyond. And what, so she knew you had a little baby girl. She knew none of the stuff that could, whatever was possibly in her car that she basically gave herself away with that there was something in the car by you saying anything that's in the car is Maryland's. And you're over like, here, okay. you're over here talking to the other cop like, hey, yeah, how can we get her? What can we do? And she's over there yeah. like everything in that car is Maryland's. Um, yeah. And, uh, and I'm just like, wait. And then I'm thinking, okay, well, Maybe it is, but I highly doubt it because that's not even what he asked. Um, she was just trying to like, you know, already claim that. Um, so you have never, you were just like, you saw this and you're like, well, I know what she is and yeah. I'm good. Yeah, it showed her true colors and it kind of made me feel like, wow, I kind of feel like I need to almost like be very picky about the people I let into my life. You know, like if you are my friend and I let you in my life, like it's because you're benefiting me in some way. And you know, you're complimenting, not, not complicating my life. Exactly, exactly. And it seemed like, you know, with her, it was almost like I was kind of chasing, like being a friend sometimes, like, you know, she never responded to me all the time. Like if she mm -hmm. was like in town, um, you know, just like Halloween where I was like, Hey, like, come over. Like I haven't seen you in forever. And, and it just never happened. And sometimes that was kind of like how it would be where I, I definitely pr tried to prioritize, like, you know, having time and like seeing her and reaching out and she kind of never did the same for me. So it kind of made me step back and be like, wow, I really need to, you know, be very picky with, with my friends and, and the people I let in my life. And it was a wake up call for me too. You know, I don't, I'm kind of a little too trusting sometimes with people and, and I need to, you know, have my walls up with certain situations and certain people that, 
you know, I didn't know her super well. Like we had just really become friends in the past like year, like two ish years, you know, like Mm -hmm. it wasn't someone I really knew much in high school. And that's kind of like who I still talk to like now, like my soft friends, my two solid friends are like who my best friends were in high school. And, um, I'm so grateful for those relationships and the new ones I've created outside of high school and outside of college. Like those, those friendships are are important to me too, because it's not just, it's, it's give and take. It's not just all giving or all taking, you yeah. know? No, yeah. you, you nailed it, girl. Like you are, you know, <laughs> wise beyond your years to like, you know, lot, not a lot of people in, um, your position would be saying the things that you're saying, uh, be, um, going about it this way. Um, I think that that shows, you know, who you are as a person, you know, just because of somebody in the way they are does not mean that you have to, you know, be who they are and react that way. Um, to make a point, you're just like, I, I saw, I saw what I saw and, um, it is what it is. Yeah. But you by no chance, like, um, you weren't driving around with her while she was like, you, were you put, like going around being like, yeah, we're selling drugs over here. Like, is that what you were doing that night? Were you actively selling drugs? To oh, people? God. Absolutely not. I had no idea, you know, if she was even doing any of that, mm-hmm. I, I would have had no idea that it would have been that night, like at all. Like mm-hmm. that night was strictly, you know, it was our Valentine's night, you yeah. know, I, I had such a great dinner with Isaac, probably the first dinner we've had <laughs> without a baby next to us in like months. And, and then we just ran into some friends and it was really just like, it was a really fun, like wholesome night. And, you know, if she was doing that, we had no idea that was not, I wouldn't have expected her to be doing that with us i mean like were you really like when you been. saw that she got arrested with like that d guy for that um mm. like were, was that yeah. surprising to you or were you just like wow like how did that like were you just like you know it wasn't surprising because i knew that guy mm-hmm. like was involved but Emma was also the kind of person that would be like, oh, no, I'm not with D anymore. And then would, like, be with him, like, the next week. You know what I mean? Yeah, so typical girls. <laughs> that was another reason, That was kind of another reason why we didn't talk super much is because she would kind of come over and be like, oh, I'm just, like, so happy to be, like, away from this person, like, this D guy. And, um, and then would end up being with him, like, the next, like – few weeks where it's just like okay so you're kind of (laughs) being wishy-washy with you know what you're telling us and maybe you just want to seem one way to us and seem another way to other people which like is fine but that's kind of also where I I knew okay you know our friendship really only goes so far with with really what we tell each other, like it seemed like she just lied a lot and I could really see that. So I thought she was doing a lot better because I didn't think she was with this D guy. But then when I saw all that new stuff, I was like, well, that's kind of what you get for hanging out with someone who's involved with that. And she knew that too. And me and Isaac always encouraged her to like not be in that relationship situation whatever and so I think it was her trying to play both sides we're like oh no like I'm not with him anymore but then like she was you Mm -hmm. know what I mean so I'm like okay well it's not surprising to me that like that even happened because I could have told you they were together even when people thought they weren't (laughs) yeah yeah so it so is it like okay like it's my opinion it could be like your opinion do you think that Emma, like, if if D wasn't around, do you think that Emma would be a different person? Like, if she oh, totally, one hundred percent. I think who you surround yourself with 
you know, you really become and you just, you are who you surround the five people, like who, like the five people you're with the most, like you're, you're them basically. Like, yeah. Cause that's who you're choosing yeah, to give your time to. Yeah, that is. And it's, you know, it's who you're giving and taking with. So, you know, she didn't hang out with us a lot, but I'm pretty sure she hung out with D a lot. You know, like I could just tell like when she was not in Moscow and somewhere else, it was usually with him. And I think if she didn't feel so maybe so trapped and so codependent on that situation and relationship that she could have really like done a lot with her life. I, I think she had a lot of potential and, you know, I still honestly probably think she does, unfortunately, with all the circumstances, but she has to change for herself, not for other people. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I agree with you on that. I agree with you on, um, I mean, I didn't, I didn't realize what a big age difference it is. Like D's in his mid thirties, you know, she's 20, what, 21, 22, something like that. And I was just like, wow. Like, um, I know that my parents at the age of 21, 22, if I brought, you know, D home and, um, oh. they would just be like, how you're wait, you're dating what a 36 year old. Yeah. What the fuck's going on here? Why? Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> And then if my parents were to engage in conversations like, hey, D, so, um, okay, well, what what do you do for a living? Um, Literally. I, I guess I'm a, I, I, I don't know, like, um, I'm a farmer. You know what I mean? Like, what do you do for a living? 40 years I've lived. <laughs> you know, like, what do you do for, so, like, my, my family, um, just, like, I could just imagine how that conversation would go, and it would have nothing to yeah. do with, like, you know, it would just, uh, Usually, like, two, be- people are in two different positions of their lives when they're 22 and 36. Like, that's the whole thing. When pe- people say, like, age isn't a number. Age is is only a number. But you're in different stages of your life, okay? And completely, what somebody... Completely. Yeah. Yeah. So I was just... And then just, like, when you want to listen to what this person would actually, like, answer to questions. Um, yeah. And it would just be like, okay, so what do you do for a living? How does my daughter know you? How did you meet this person? You know, yeah. how would, how would Emma even be able to answer those questions? And I think that as a parent, I would have problems with that. Like, cause I'm not going to mm-hmm. be naive to the like, fact of whatever the truth may be. No. Yeah. No, a hundred percent. Right. Yeah. That whole gap was a little odd. I, I don't think I even really found that out until like a while after I found out about him. I just, you know, I never really met him. I think I saw him in passing one time. <laughs> and oh, so he was like not around. He wasn't like coming over to your house when she would come over and like kicking it. Oh God, no, no. Um, when she was like in town, he like was, I don't think he was like, I think he might've been probably like the times, like the time she didn't want to like see me or didn't answer me back or whatever. Um, she was probably with him, but no, he had never come to my house. He had never, I think I literally saw him in passing like one time, um, whether he like dropped her off or picked her, I think he like picked her up or something Okay. from where we had dropped her off at. Mm-hmm. So, and, and what kind of car, but, does, what kind of car does D have? Does he have like a normal car? Does he have like a white Elantra? I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> dude, right. <laughs> I think he just. I don't think he ever really owned a car. I'm pretty sure they had rentals um, before Emma actually, like, got her own car. Oh, they would just use, yeah, just use rental cars? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I remember she told me one time that, like, they had, like, something happened to the bumper and she had to pay, like, a grand or two grand to fix it. Yeah. And I'm like, well. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, they had to pay a grand or two grand to fix, like, the the um the rental bumper yeah something i don't even know really what happened to it but something happened nice nice yeah that's what that's what what my that's what my people in uh um anywhere i've ever known when you 
always see somebody in a different car like i'm just like yeah i wonder what they do for a living it was just that's what right. that's like one of like the non said <laughs> things um yeah but okay so as a local we'll we'll end here because i know that you got to get back and, and do your thing if, I know. if I you can definitely be struggling upstairs with daddy so <laughs> i know the moms always do better let's not kid ourselves i know dude i know but when you showed me the video and you're like oh dad dad's coming and i was like oh that's gonna happen every time i know it does i'm like okay first word whatever let's learn some new words <laughs> <laughs> if you were to say okay so just hypothetically speaking from your opinion mm -hmm. on everything that you heard with like the case in idaho um you know do you do you watch mainstream media do you like pay attention to like what they're saying does anything kind of just like i mean honestly i don't i really like go on tiktok very rarely um and that's kind of where i see most of this stuff or on facebook news um Okay. I see quite a bit of stuff on there too. Okay. So yeah, they, there was like, there was no arrest for a long period of time until there was an arrest. Um, did once you heard that arrest and I mean, do you think that that's how it played out? Do you think it's, do you think it's legit? Do you think something else is up? Do you think, you know, is, do you have any opinions about what you think happened that night? as a local like um, or if you don't you don't well, if you do with the, with the victims yeah yeah i just mean like in general do you think it is what mainstream media is saying that it is um versus uh like is is moscow else. hiding any secrets with this you know because this never happens like you said like this is like you know, you know is it something that know. Mainstream media is hard because I think it's a lot of distractions um, from other kind of like issues. Like, like, you know, when you were talking earlier about like, oh, the president just wants the campus to be more safe. Yeah. Well, um, I thought there was cameras all along the uh, campus. Um I don't know if they were like recently installed or they always have been installed, but you know, I was talking to someone, maybe it was Isaac and he was like, how in the world do you have a campus full of cameras? And, and you don't really see kind of like how this went down. So I, I don't think like Moscow is trying to necessarily hide anything, but it sounds a little too like put together in a sense where you know, like, there's so many other things that could have, like, played. And I feel like, I feel like they know a lot more than they're even really telling. Um, yeah, 100. That's so interesting that you bring up the cameras on campus. So th yeah. that's like a thing, like, you're, like, they're, that's so true. Like, think about it. All these campuses need to be safe, need to be, you know, so that people want to go to the school, that you feel like you're sending your kid to a safe school. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then here, you're... Like, like Isaac said, how, you have all these, you have all these cameras. How do we not have anything? Right. Yeah. Oh, totally. It's weird. It's just all weird. It's like, okay, well in a town of yeah, literally 20,000, <laughs> like how does someone even get away with something like this? And I don't know. It, it definitely seems very, like would very you, odd, very, yeah, very odd, very, very odd that yeah that there should be hella surveillance exactly and like really in my opinion i am i like i mean you watch all these crime shows they have them on tnt and they have all of these murder mysteries and whatever and it's like you know yes it's usually one person but like you know you always have help like there's it just seems like how like when i think about it here in moscow i'm like damn how did this one guy do all of this like yeah it's just odd. and then everybody me, like, having cell phones like everybody yeah, has cell phones yeah. so like how come nobody used them that night like what's going on mm -hmm. like you know what i mean yeah it was really weird to me too to be like okay so if if you know these victims were found at like 
6 a.m. or 8 a.m. I don't even know what time it was. Why wasn't the cops called until noon? Like, like to me, like a lot of the timing is very weird and very just off Mm -hmm. to me, you know, and, and it seems like a lot of work for one person to do. Right. And and then not, yeah, it's almost impossible to me. Like, like it is. And then then to leave two people, like if you're going to stab four people, but that there was other people there, like, why didn't they stab the other people? Why didn't that person stab the other people? Exactly. Like, especially when there was stuff like, oh, well, she saw like, who it was and can identify it's like okay so you just wanted to get caught like and a lot of people were saying oh well brian koberger is like he was like in criminology or whatever at wsu so like he really knows the system but it's like okay well no one no one just lets themselves get caught like like if you're like actually trying to like get away with this like like then get away with it like you know you you should have you shouldn't have any witnesses being able to yeah. see you. Like that's, that's to me, like Marilyn, you are you. singing my chorus. Yep. I said to myself, Thanks. and I've never put this out there publicly. I said, Brian Colberger should have gotten away with this. If he is the perp, he should have gotten yeah. away with this. How does he get no, caught? Exactly. It's weird. It's so freaking weird where it's almost like, okay, so was he just like, was he just like a player? in like the game like was he just like yeah. almost like a <sighs> do, do you do you feel like do, when you if you do you feel safe living where you're saying like like are you like did you ever like when this was going on and they didn't have anybody like were you like oh my god what the like we're all like sitting ducks here like so did you think there was like a mass murder necessarily like scared because part of me was like, okay, well, they caught the guy. But then, like, the more you kind of hear things, the more you read things, the more you kind of research for yourself, you're like, huh, I don't necessarily think, like, there's, like, like, harm or necessarily, like, a warning, like, in the town. It's definitely a little more, you know, you're definitely a little more aware of your surroundings, and like which is good <laughs> but yeah. i i mean i feel safe in the town of Palouse, i feel safe like if someone wants to <laughs> drive 15 miles out here to like stab people in their houses like good luck but good luck we're gonna shoot you <laughs> gonna sh- enter my home where i'm shooting <laughs> like no i just no i feel you everyone a ring camera or a light from there exactly light. everybody's it's ring yeah ring cameras on, lights like, and they had like their neighbors had all this this is the one house that it's, yeah it's it's not like a college street where there's a bunch of drunk you know college students like not paying attention who comes into their houses like these motherfuckers can totally hear you like three yards away i swear mm-hmm. no it's true it's <laughs> it's totally true. dogs too but is is there any truth in the tunnels of like is there truth in like Moscow? Like is there like tunnels underneath like the roads? Like I don't know. People have been bugging me about like ask a local about what? tunnels. Have you ever heard anything about tunnels underneath like the No. Ro- okay. People, I'm gonna ask my dad. Yeah, ask though. yeah, because people people are always like, man, and when you talk to those locals, ask them about the tunnels. And I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna give you a tunnel snap. <laughs> I'm like, here you go. Um my gosh like just under the roads yeah just like have you ever heard of like that there's tunnels in Moscow? like just have you ever heard that growing up like uh, about tunnels no tunnels the only thing like underground i heard of was like there's there's supposed to be this like underground bar oh, a bar let's go girl it's, to, it's like a kind of like a a speakeasy you know like where you kind of like yes. walk through a restaurant and behind it it's like this whole other thing where it's like an underground like like kind of like club i've really only heard about this once and it was from an ex and he had gone and it was almost like oh he it was kind of like a rave there almost where it was like cool music i don't know if there was drinking Mm-hmm. I don't even know much about it, but like it's almost like a secretive kind of like bar thing or whatever. But that's the only like underground 
Do you, do, wait, did you ever hear like a name of it? It's like a speakeasy, you know? right? So like it would be like it's like where Some somebody thing. makes it somebody makes it seem like it's um because like speakeasies One, were like but, those were like sex clubs. Are, is those are those is that what they're like promiscuous clubs what? or no? Yeah, yeah. Um they can be. Okay. But this seemed more like this seemed more of like um like a fraternity, you know, like back when like what was it? Maybe. Maybe more of like a club where okay. you could just like go listen to some music. But I've only I only heard of it like once and I never heard of it again, but it was, it's because it was supposed to be secret and like, yeah. you know, like no one knew, but I don't think it was something that was even like, um, open a lot. Like it seemed like it was, it seemed like it was very inconsistent with like, it was like open to like people. And it was almost like you got an invite, you know, you couldn't just like show up or something. Okay. So tunnel, like, yeah, you had to have like a, a password yeah yeah password. something like that like, but that's like ask your dad i'm curious i am he's he's a moscow local and yeah. maybe i'll even ask my grandpa yeah ask him ask me if it was local. it was during prohibition and ask me if they if, if moscow okay. ever had tunnels and it would be okay. like it, you could like go underground and like travel you know through the the tunnels and it was during prohibition so I'll I'll send you some I'll send you some that's tech so stuff cool. on it. Yeah. And I'm yeah, just curious. Definitely, yeah, I'll definitely ask and figure that out. That's, All right. Yeah, I'm curious on that. Man, that's so cool if Moscow had that. I right? feel like that sound the underground kind of crazy, but they true. <laughs> right. I feel you. Well, hey, go back, go, go back to your, your daughter, go help daddy out. Um, I kept you Thank long you. enough. Um, we'll do this again though. Like if you want, I, like I told you, I'm so easy. Go back, like just shoot the shit. I'm just, I, I like to hear what people from the area think just in terms of, you know, um, like growing up there. And then, like I said, like we just ended here with some tunnel stuff. So, Definitely. but, um, yeah. and Hey, I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry for everything that you had to see on, um, like, so, you know, someone telling you to go look at YouTube and then you just saw something like that. I'm that sucks. And um, yeah, I hope that Emma, maybe, you know, maybe Emma feels bad about it too. Maybe she'll see this and she's like, you know, I really did hurt my friend and I want to yeah. call her up or text her and say like, I, Hey, I'm really, really sorry. Like, I, I don't know what I was thinking or, you know what I mean? Right. That would, that would be so appreciative. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily be her friend again, um, but you, at all. But. Yeah. You but know, you're it, it you're just a so, doll. You're you're so wise it, beyond your years, girl. You you got it. You got it going on. Oh, thank you so much. And your daughter you is so one lucky person. <laughs> no, I'm so, I'm telling you, like you cannot find 20, 20 something year olds that have the logic, the critical thinking, and just like uh, I'm, I'm telling you, like you're an old soul. And thank you so much. And, and like of I said, course. I'm really sorry about everything that happened with that night. And yeah. if there's anything that I could ever help with, you know, uh, hey, hit me up. But um, we'll do this again, totally. definitely. And cool. uh, tell Isaac I said thanks for pulling double daddy duty. Of course. I will totally let him know. Thank you so much cool. for having me. I appreciate being able to kind of share my perspective and, you yep. know, other people kind of caring about that, too. That, you know, is much appreciated so thank you you're thank you for having me awesome no you're so welcome and i will talk to you uh soon Dal. okay okay all right good. all right Thanks. bye marilyn well if that isn't a classy broad i don't know what or who is um you know if i was her parents right now i'd be super proud it if I was her friend right now, I'd be ecstatic to have a friend like that. Um, mm -mm -mm. Somebody that wrote in chat was talking about that it's sus that she didn't see her for six months. Let me, let me break this down for you guys. Um, when you are pregnant and then you have a child, you're like, cool, awesome friends that like ask you to go out to the bars and hang out. 
they stop asking you to do things because they know that you can't. Um, that's just a thing that happens in life. So there's nothing sus about um, Emma and her not talking um, for a period of time. And that's kind of what she alluded to that, hey, it was, it was more or less on Emma's time that things would go down or whatever. But um, it's definitely uh, not sus on any type of level. Um, so those of you guys don't, that don't realize how that works, but your single friends, your party friends, when you have a baby or when you're pregnant, you know, um, they're out doing their thing. They're not, um, bringing you your cravings of ice cream. And here you even got to hear Marilyn talk about that. She's like, you know, Emma would come over and like, we would eat when I was pregnant and things like that. I think Marilyn's about as real as you can get. Um, I think it's a normal thing to be hurt when you would have seen something like that. Like you're about to blame whatever the hell you had in your car on me. Um, and, uh, how I thought, um, how I thought Marilyn handled in the grace and, you know, didn't come on here going Jerry Springer on her ass. She came on here to say like, yeah, it really hurt. You know, um, I would have done anything for her, um, as a friend. That's what you do. Um, but Emma knew that she had a daughter and she was still willing to blame or attempt to blame things. So it's, um, I thought I just, I commend her. There's not too many young 20 year olds that act that way. So, um, I think she made it perfectly clear that she's not involved with any of the drugs, um, if uh, there are drugs. And I think she made it perfectly clear that her and uh, other people have tried to get Emma away from the lifestyle that Dee brings on with that. And Emma, or I'm sorry, and Marilyn was my deciding factor with how I portray, um, you know, is D a shrimp loving um, works by the ports of Seattle so that he can be involved with the shrimp business or is he involved in other things? And um, after my conversations with Marilyn, you know, I, I believe her 100. Um, and I believe that Emma, Emma was most certainly, I mean, again, this is me. Um, Emma was most certainly pushing Dee's product. Um, and that's me. That's, I'm, I'm saying that that's my opinion. And, um, and this video, this video is proof of that to the point of that you have a woman here that's your friend, that's a mom that never goes out, happens to run into you, happens to just hang out with you a couple times, been, you know, been friends with you for a couple years and you get pulled over and you're just ready to, well, daddy D should have taught you to just shut the fuck up and get your lawyer. Um, but blaming a single mom in a young relationship. Um, and I only say single because she's not married. She has her baby daddy boyfriend, but you just don't do that. Um, Marilyn's daughter needs her, you know what I mean? And to just think that how way South that could have gone. Um, just wild. But you guys are rocking awesome. But I just, I, I can't say enough. I, I have so many amazing things to say about this girl. And I think you guys got to hear it for your for, for yourselves. Like she spoke. Those are her words, you know. Um, <laughs> going Jerry Springer on that ass. Yes, Marilyn done great. And yes, yes, I agree. <clears throat> 
So, sorry I had to go to members only, but I'm not going to, I barely look at chat when I'm trying to do something, but at the, at the end of the day, um, if you want to know something, you have to listen. You have to read, you have to listen. Marilyn came on here <clears throat> to tell us stuff, and if you would have listened, then you would know things. So it just takes a couple minutes to listen. Um, and I don't think that a lot of listening can go on when people are texting. Um, so I just helped everybody out and said, hey, if I make this members only, then you guys have to listen. So I think I helped your guys' ears, you know. Uh, and if you still wanted to type away, then I guess you could pay for it through the membership. But um, I will always have a guest on. And when I do, I'm going to give them – uh, and the members and the subscribers and the moderators, the moderators want to listen. You know what I mean? <clears throat> My moderators have the best comments when they're like, Lana, we're modding. We have to go back and listen to what you said in your live because we're modding. <laughs> so, um, and that's so true. Like they want you guys to have the, this best experience when you're here. And I just, I love the mods and they make the atmosphere and, so thank you guys so much. Um, thank you again to, to Marilyn. And um, I want to close out the episode with um, the end of my uh, Nancy Grace roast. Because um, I'm feeling saucy. So... Yeah, Jerry Springer died. My roommate banged Jerry Springer <laughs> at Cincinnati. So uh, I'll never forget those days. Shit, you guys not. I don't know if I have told you guys a story. Back in the day when you would play your um, answering machines when you come home. I'm coming home from... Um, a night of being out during college and I go upstairs and I see our red light blinking. So I hit play. And this is what I hear. Hey, Ashley, it's Jerry, Jerry Springer here. You were looking so great. Just want to know if you wanted me to come on over. I press play again. Jerry, Jerry, he's like, he can just say, Hey, it's Jerry. Or, hey, it's Jerry. No, hey, Ash, it's Jerry. Jerry Springer here. You look so great tonight over there at the Blind Pig or whatever the fuck it was called she bartended. And I was just like, stop. Ashley, why is Jerry Springer going our house? <laughs> so, um, yeah. And we played it over and over and over and we'd bust balls about it. And I was like, tell me you're not being Jerry Springer. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Jerry and she's like no he's one hell of a you know he tips whatever and I was like we have Jerry Springer calling I was like let's get on the Jerry Springer show let's just make up some shit um but think about that man think about coming home in college walking up the stairs pressing your answering machine and you hear hey Ash it's Jerry Jerry Springer here pause Ashley, why is Jerry Springer going our house? So that's a true story. Then a couple weeks later, it was the Reds players calling. Yo, this is Adam Dunn. Why don't you just say, yo, this is Adam. Yo, this is Adam Dunn. Just give me a call and get this. Okay, Adam. And I press pause. Ashley, why is Adam Dunn from the Reds calling us? Oh, do you want to go out with me? Dunn and, and Austin Kearns, no, he has the biggest ears I've ever seen. I got something to hang on to, I guess. Like, I would just mess with her. Um, we would get red tickets all the time, and athletes always hung out with athletes. So I was like, hey, let's get some shirts that says Dunn did it. You know, Dunn did it. And um, she's like, what? I was like, yeah, let's make some T-shirts. Dunn did it. We sat out there. This is when the reds were shitty. They've always been shitty. And we'd sit out there and heckle players and like, you know, the bleachers. <laughs> so we we wore done, did it. We got in trouble for that. Like just like basically alluding to the fact that my roommate was banging Adam Dunn. So 
I was like, does he even have, does he have a wife or something? We're wearing these shirts. Done did it. That nah, was in college. So I was like, we got the Reds players calling. We got Jerry Springer calling. Who else called our house? Oh, 98.5 called our house, told us we want a Super Bowl party. Now that's a great story. I was like, Ashley, you put us in a contest? She's like, yeah, why? They call? I was like, yeah, 98.5 call. What, what did you do? She's like, oh my God, did we win the Super Bowl party? I said, we won a Super Bowl party? She's like, oh my God, yeah, they come to our house and they go live and they do their whole presentation during the Super Bowl and they give the house a huge, like, this was back in the days where they give like the big, um, what are they? The screens that have like the thick, whatever those were. It was like, she's like, oh my God, we won the party. I was like, yeah, we won, I guess. I don't know. Look, listen, listen to the answer machine. She's like, oh my God, we're having people over. I was like, we always have people. <laughs> this is nothing new. Next thing I know, 98.5s here. They're going wild outside. They got the Hummer out there. They're wheeling in this big ass flat. So I can't even call it a flat screen. It was a thick screen. And they're like, how do you feel about winning this? I was like, what did we do to win it? We, what, did, what did she enter us in to? She's like, well, we had a contest and she called in and entered you guys and said that um, we, you guys have one of the best party houses on campus. I said, well, what did she say we do? We don't do anything. She said, you guys had the fire department come over and spray you guys. <laughs> I said, that's illegal. Why is she telling you this? So it was, she's just like, oh, we're, we're athletes at the University of Cincinnati. Enough said, period, and submitted it. That was the entry that won. Who would ever throw the best Super Bowl party? And she said, well, we're a bunch of female athletes at the University of Cincinnati. We can out drink whatever and period. That's all she said. And she just sent it in. And she's like, oh my God, we won. I was like, what? You won off of one sentence? She's like, oh yeah, I think that we just told them that we just party and drink and we're athletes. I said, sounds great. Yeah. So yeah, that, that was our, uh, that was something wild. And then here's me like, well, should we call the fire department over like and pretend that we like get sprayed with like the fire? Like, what do you want us to do? She's like, no. She's like, it's the middle of winter. I was like, oh yeah, that's right. We only do that during the summer times, Ashley. She's like, yeah, totally. Because we totally called the the fire department to come come to come down and spray us. And this was back in the day when you could do stuff like that and people wouldn't go crazy about it. Like now, all of those guys would have been fired. Like we would just say that, hey, it's like 90 degrees down here. Can you bring down some water? And so they would bring the fire truck down and then they would spray us with the hose up on our balcony. And we were all like laying out in like bikinis and they would spray us with the fire <laughs> truck. <laughs> But I think everybody would have lost their jobs if this was like, you know, this was 20 years ago. So, but see, like we had rules. Like our, I had the best roommates, but we locked our doors. Nobody was ever in our house that we didn't know. We were like, you know, we didn't just let anybody in our house. But it was totally a different time back then. You could totally do that. Nowadays, can you imagine? That would have been like all over. That was before like iPhones were like a thing and, you know, people were recording like they do. This is a totally different world. Um, but yeah, just sharing some things with you guys. So that's what I try to say. Like I work hard and I party hard. But you, you just do it all smart. Like we would have never gotten noise complaints. Like that would have never happened back then. Um, we always just did it like a little pregame. Like we weren't big into like we just we didn't want people in our house. Like we'll go to some, you know, let's go to the soft like the soccer sophomore house and just wreck that place. So we had our sweet ass shit and kept it nice. So don't shit where you eat, guys. That's my motto. Lana, where are you? You are the friend I wish I had. <laughs> uh, 
thank you guys for being so kind in, in chat for, for Marilyn, all the super chats. And I'm going to go through those here at the end, but um, let us roast the rest of, um, of Nancy. Cause Nancy, like, I respect all of you guys for your job, but you're flat out wrong. Like you're just wrong. Um, but here we go. Let's t let's take a look. You guys love that. <laughs> but she's pure as a nun. Yeah. Nunja. Nun. <laughs> oh, God. Let's see. Here we go. I just All right, guys. Here we go. Do you talk like a So I just had to. Sorry. Nancy, coming straight for you, girl. What you got for me, Nancy? Nancy Grace, coming in hot. T sweat. Sweat, Nancy. Nancy. Nancy Grace. There she is. I do feel. Nancy. There she is. Come on, Nancy. Do it. To, do it to me one more time. The, the, the secret life of Brian Kohlberger. Uh, but I think we're going to see incidents where people are going to say, mostly women, are going to come forward and say, look, you know, this guy was creepy at this party. So no guys. weirded me out. So no guys are coming through. Et cetera, et cetera, <laughs> where he became possessive of women even prior to a you know, if he is our guy, which it sounds like the DNA is telling us he, it is, there's a whole bunch more behavior that's going to come forward uh, that is going to be not connected to drugs and not connected to that addiction, but more about uh, maybe a sexual side of his personality. There was no sexual... Um, there was nothing sexual about this crime. Or, or was it sexual to him when he was stabbing people? More intrinsic to Koberger himself, not necessarily about an addiction, but about his personality. Yes. Uh, another thing regarding that, um, Chris McDonough, is that most of this evidence, if not all of it, will never come in front of a jury. Yeah. And <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Wait. So none of this evidence is going to come in front of a jury? What evidence? What is going on here? Then what evidence isn't going to come in front of a jury? So then what the fuck are you talking about? Uh, another thing regarding that. Um, She's just so sad about it. Chris McDonough is that most of this evidence, if not all of it, will never come in front of a jury. What evidence, Nancy? There is no evidence. What evidence? What evidence isn't going to come in front of a jury? The evidence of you talking about your opinion on why he stole his, his sister's cell phone and like sold it for $200? That's never going to come in front of a jury? What is she talking about? What evidence isn't going to come in front of a jury? Look at that face. Mwah. He yeah. And, and this is why I think it's fascinating that the defense is utilizing motions to start planning a narrative to the public. <laughs> what the fuck are you all doing? I cannot. The defense is planting a narrative. Oh, I'm about to plant it in that. You know what? I be stroking. I stroke it to the. And I the defense is utilizing motions. Just Did you hear Nancy breathing there? Listen. And and this is why I think it's fascinating that the defense is utilizing motions to start planning a narrative to the public. Uh, and this is okay. Why what do you mean by that? I think Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. What do you mean by that? 
you want him to elaborate so that you don't have to. Well, you know, the gag order is in place for the court. And so now we get two new attorneys involved uh, who, you know, rightfully so as part of the death penalty team for the defense. We get two new attorneys involved and immediately they've been involved. Go check out when they what what they, they start writing, uh, you know, at motions about the DNA evidence. <laughs> Chris, do you not read this shit? This is you guys do realize that this is not true. These people have been with who who are these new attorneys? Who are these? So you have 120 law enforcement personnel. Then you have what? Bill Thompson, who needs to bring on who? The attorney general gave you what? Two people from Boise, sent them on to you guys in Moscow, right? So you have Bill Thompson, who didn't say a word at the hearing. And you have, um, ready? Ooh, ooh, Ingrid who basically got waxed during the hearing, but Bill didn't say a word in the hearing. And you're saying that because it was the death penalty case, they just announced that it was going to be a death penalty case. Jay, he's been on the case since day one. She added the woman back at least a month or so ago. I'll get you that date. There was nobody that's just like, oh, it's death penalty. Now we got these people on board and now they're writing all these fucking motions. No, Ann Taylor has been bending everybody over a couch and saying, you've been bad, bad, bad. She came out in a motion and said the sheath was placed. Placed. And it's, you know, it's crafted very, very well, uh, you know, by lawyers who are DNA experts, both of them. But what it's doing is it's creating a narrative within the public. So, you know, that's kind of getting around the gag order that the court has. They're utilizing the public records uh, to create. They're asking for it to be sealed. What are you talking about? They're not getting around anything. They're motioning the courts. So you think that they're... So let me ask you this, Chris. If they would just hand over the discovery, they the defense wouldn't have to be writing motions to say, we don't have this shit. And writing it in bold face letters to say, these are the things that we don't have. There's no forensics in the car, y'all. There's no forensics in his apartment. There... And when I say that there's no DNA, okay, is this case circumstantial? Is this case this? Is this case this? What type of case are we dealing with? Do we have eyewitnesses? Do we? What do we have here? And y'all are saying that because the defense is doing their job, they're putting out a narrative? They're motioning. They're writing motions, asking for discovery. And if the prosecution would just give them the discovery, they wouldn't be motioning for the discovery. And in fact, Ann Taylor was so kind to not say things that was like, I, I think that they were actually pretty, pretty cool about it. They said, here, go to this number and you're going to be able to see what it says. This request, go to request number this, go to request number that versus, you know, putting it all out there of um, who and what, she was asking for. Um, but Chris, it's a very simple question if you were on my show. So let me ask you this. If the defense, or I'm sorry, if the prosecution was to just hand over the things that, that they should have already, it's been six months, there was supposed to be a preliminary hearing back and they should have been ready for it if there was to be one back in January. But there was supposed to be one in June. Um if they would have just handed this stuff over, then none of this gets into to be into motions. So what's your that create a narrative, uh, which I think is fascinating. It's a it's it's you know actually pretty smart. <laughs> just thinking through everything. Do so you think it's smart when somebody defends their client? 
I think I wish that Sheldon Jeter Jr. out of Pennsylvania would have had one one hundredth of a lawyer like Ann. Thing you're saying, um, I'm thinking through the fact that he stole from his sister. Oh he had fuck, a Nancy! Involved giving him a ride to sell the phone. The next thing Nancy's going to talk about is that he lost his virginity, like Hugh Hefner did at 21. Okay. And then that somehow scarred him. You guys know that Hugh Hefner didn't lose his virginity until 21, right? His father turned him in. I'm thinking about that dynamic and that family dynamic and how that's playing into what we know right now. The jury most likely will never hear that. This comes on the heels of an announcement by the state that they will seek the death penalty. That gives heightened scrutiny to everything that the state does. See, and, and this is my take on that. The way that I would describe this if I was mainstream media and someone was like, hey, Lana, do you want to come and be on our broadcast? You're going to have to cover the news and, and things that come up. The, this case, and because of what happened, the state is seeking the death penalty. It's not that the state is seeking the death penalty against, and it shouldn't be, because it's Brian Kohlberger. What the state is doing is the state is choosing that this type of a crime that involved four people being stabbed to death, blah, 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 everything that it is, this case in Idaho's eyes is meriting them saying we're going after the death penalty in this case. So the way that I would go about explaining that to the public is to say that whoever is responsible, the defendant in this case, whoever that may be, whoever is responsible, they are going after the death penalty in this case because of the crime. Z. Because the question is, is that if you take Brian Kohlberger out of the equation, okay, were you going to seek the death penalty before you knew it was Brian Kohlberger? Isn't, is this a, just a death penalty case because it's a death penalty case? What makes it more of a death penalty case that it's Brian Kohlberger? What if it was a police officer? What if it was a, a dad, an uncle, um, a janitor, a, whoever? What does the person that committed the crimes make a damn difference of what you're going to seek. And to me, I don't care who, if, if that's your, if take all of that away and you just look at the crime and the case and would you seek the death penalty in this case? See, that's why I love Ohio. In the Chad, um, Dorman case, the prosecutor came right out and at their first hearing where they said, Ohio said, hey, guess what? $20 million is what your highest ever for um, for a bail here. You know, boom, 20 mil. DA, DA walked out, talked to the media and said, Oh, I said what I said. We're seeking the death penalty. I want to. I want to see. I am. I'm seeking the death penalty. There was no thinking about any of this. This was because of this case. It wasn't because it was who it was. It was. Th we're going for the death penalty. Period. And I said every what I said in the in the courtroom and what I said in the courtroom stands. Period. They said that day one, in his case, when he lined up his three children chased down one allegedly from uh, running away, brought him back to execute his three sons, shot his wife through her hand, right? Well, Ohio had no problem saying, we released the body cam footage. Ohio released the body cam footage of what they had that they felt that here, transparency, right? Here's Ohio. Here's the body cam footage. We're seeking the death penalty immediately this was no like we're seeking the death penalty as a play this isn't 
we're not playing and saying this is a game. Like, okay, this, the, the defense just came out and said, you don't have anything tying our client to this case. We want the grand jury notes. We want the grand jury this. We want this. We want this. We want all these things that our client is entitled to have under criminal rules of procedure and the codes. And you're not giving us those things. And, oh, wait, and then here you go. Here's your report. There's no DNA in his car of any of the victims. No, nothing tying him. Da -da 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 -da. All these things, right? And then what is the state's answer? We're going death penalty. We're not, okay. You guys should all went death penalty from the moment this walked out. This happened, right? This should have been a death penalty case from jump. In my opinion, if you're a death penalty state, if that's what you do, what's what do you believe in? You know, me personally is I would never want that on me. I would never want. Um, there's nothing that's going to bring back anybody that's gone. OK, and there's nothing that's going to bring back anybody. Right. So why would I ever want somebody to ask me? about somebody else's life and that I have the power to do anything with that life. This is, that's not going to bring back my lost person. Okay. And people could say, Lana, you wouldn't say that that was your kid. Well, yeah, I can, because I would never want that on me. I would never want that on my soul. And I know that I wouldn't want that ever on my kid's soul. Okay. Because that's not who we are. All right. No, you're going to sit your happy ass every fucking day in a fucking two by four and you're going to watch a wall. Enjoy your life like that. Um, eating dog shit and whatever. Um, but why would I ever want to think every day that, no, I wouldn't want that on me. You know why? Because my child isn't coming back. And God forbid, what if we get the wrong person? You want me to say that I want the death penalty off of your fucking evidence? Off of your policing? <laughs> no, I don't. Nope. No, I don't. You know how expensive it is to do all that? No. I wouldn't want that. Um, you know, I'm thinking about that DNA evidence, Chris McDonough, where it was found is so critical. For instance, if it was found on the glove uh, that you alerted police about, you said, hey, there's a glove out. No, God, Nancy, I'm so glad that you went there with it. Ready, Nancy? Nancy, that's not the glove. That's not the glove. Nancy, the glove, according to Ann Taylor, was on November 20th. Homeboy here told everybody that he was there for Thanksgiving. The, the you know, the, um what is it? I think it's, oh wait, it's the holiday that you keep messing up, you know? Nancy, I went as platinum as you did, just so we could like argue this like appropriately, okay? So I went platinum, just as platinum as you did. There you go, Nance. So it's, it's, that glove was found on November 20th. Chris McDonough was not there until November 24th. The Idaho State Lab received 10 new pieces of evidence to be submitted to the lab between the 23rd and the 25th, 10 new pieces. But the piece that Ann is talking about, that glove, she's talking about November 20th. Now, I want to see what Chris says when he hears um, what y'all are saying. Y'all are saying that it is you and that glove that you found when you were in town with your wife on Thanksgiving. That's not the glove. 
the glove was found on November 20th. And, and why Chris, I'm just going to write him a fucking email. Maybe I should write it right now. Chris, you know that the, that the glove that they're talking about is on November 20th. Why are you going on all these shows and acting like it's like your glove that you know that you did not see until November 24th? So explain that to me. Or are you just fine with all these people having you on and then they say, oh, it's the Chris, the interview room. I'm not a sellout. Here, come get it. That may be by stranger cutting through the yard. That doesn't mean anything. But if DNA is found. Oh my God, Nancy, that's what you think this is about? <sighs> Where it was found is so critical. Critical. For instance, if it was found on the glove uh, that you alerted police about, you said, hey, there's a glove out here. Come get it. That may be by stranger cutting through the yard. That doesn't mean anything. But if DNA is found inside one of the victim's rooms or on the bed sheets or on the victim themselves, that would be damning. But we don't know where this other DNA came from, the other two male DNAs. And we don't know that, Nancy. Why don't we know that? Nancy, why don't we know that? Nancy, why don't we know that? And guess what the answer is? The answer is not because of the defense. The defense is the ones that are bringing it to our attention, right? We don't know about this because the prosecution did not did not do what? They never said, do you think the Gonzalez's were so shocked when they heard, oh my God, there's three different, there's three different male DNAs? The only reason we know that this is even a thing is because the defense had to finally say something. But y'all think that this is a tactic to say to to do what? To plan it in the to plan it where? They're stating facts. There's three unknown male DNAs. Did you guys do trees on them? Yes or no? Look at he says. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is it, it's it's the elephant in the living room for for the defense team, because, I mean, this is a huge piece of evidence uh, on, with that DNA on the snap uh, of that knife sheet. You know, the other DNA, I think, you know, to your no, point. No, you know what the huge elephant in the room is, Chris? This is the huge elephant in the room is that there would only be one source of fucking DNA on a sheath that is underneath a bloody victim that just got stabbed to death. There's only one source of it, one source of, and it happens to be on the button snap, right? So there's no blood on this sheath. How did the officers, how did Payne see the sheath if it was under the body of one of the victims and under the comforter covering everything? How do you see it, Chris? You're a detective. You walk into a room. You are you have a body cam on you, Chris. And you're standing over a body and your camera's all up in, in it. Why doesn't your body cam pick it up? My thing that I've been saying is, is the body cams are not going to lie. They're going to have timestamps on when they did things. And when you walked in and you did your little tour with Officer Smith and Officer Blaker, okay, what did your body cam see? Your body cam saw on the other dude that the dog was in the room of Kaylee's. Okay. So when you walked into that bedroom, what did your body cam see? Because you know, if you had to bend over and look and I mean, what were you doing? You shouldn't be touching shit. You get there at four o'clock. Why? Like you, there should have been hella people all up in there already. You know, um, and they're, Ann Taylor's going to eat that ass. That's all I have to say. Wait, Nancy can be explained very easily. I mean, we have the, uh, you know, the body camera of the officers responding to the, you know, the parties at the house. Uh, they're, you know, how do you have those? That potentially these girls, you know, were, were social butterflies. It doesn't make them, you know, bad individuals, right? Who I said mean, that? It's college. 
That's what kids do. And they, you know, this was a house that there were very attractive, you know, girls there. And these young men would come over and visit and they would, you know, sometimes even leave the house and, and let the house, you know, party itself. And, and so that other DNA is not going to be, in my opinion, very difficult to overcome because, you know, you have so many kids going in and out of their home. But all that other, D, like you just said it, but that's all accounted for. If all the DNA in the home, Chris, is from friends, then it should be accounted for. This is unidentified DNA. This isn't just some fucking, oh, y'all were hunting down people to get their DNAs to the point if they didn't give it up, y'all were picking up cigarette butts, okay? So you're wrong. You're wrong. This is unaccounted for DNA. This is for all the shit that you took in and all these swabs you took of all these frat boys that you said were coming and going. That's there. Yeah, that's counted for. That's, this is unaccounted for DNA. That means people that aren't in there on a regular basis, right? People that aren't what? They don't even know who to ask to get this. They, they have no idea who to go and ask for them to, hey, can you give us your DNA? That was part of the motion. The motion said that you guys went after all this DNA. You were asking people to turn in their phones and turn in their DNA. And they were doing it. And y'all went as far as to walk around. And when people didn't give up their DNA, you were finding ways to get the DNA. So this is about DNA, no matter where it was, whose is it? Whose DNA is it? Because it's foreign DNA. And there shouldn't be foreign DNA if, 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 if this is all friends that you know and that are there and turning over their DNA, you know? Um, so when you say that, it's just, it's, it's, it's a nothing. What? Think about your life. Like, what do you mean? How is it nothing? However, Brian Koberger's DNA on that sheath underneath her body tells us, or beside her body, tells us a whole bunch about, you know, him being in that house. That is a really high bar to overcome, but, you know, you're the well, expert. Well, in, hold on right there. That, that's How another issue and a good issue yeah. for the state. It's one thing for a friend, a study partner, a boyfriend to have their DNA in the home. But why is Koberger's DNA in the home? He isn't right. rightfully there, much less on the knife sheath. And we can't claim, uh, oh, this is the knife he looked at at a store. And you know what, Nancy? I would agree with you. Nancy, I agree with you. I agree with you. How do we explain Koberger's DNA being there? How was it there, right? You're like, he doesn't know these people. He is, yeah, absolutely. Nancy couldn't agree more with you. 100, we're going to be, we agreed. How do you explain that, right? You ready, Nancy? That's why we're asking for how you got to Brian Kohlberger. How did you even find out that it was Brian Kohlberger's? This should be unidentified unknown, unidentified DNA. There should have been four. The glove, the two inside, and then the sheath. There was four unidentified male DNA. Four. Out of the four, Nancy, think about this. I'm going to reverse your odds. I'm going to play you backwards, Nancy. Out of the four, how come only one of those four was able to be identified. How come you aren't identifying if it's so? Wouldn't you want to make your case as strong as you possibly could? So let's take the that other DNA and let's do these trees the same way that we did Kohlberger's trees. And let's find out because maybe what we can show is that, oh my God, it's the DNA of the fucking Amazon delivery guy because it was on an Amazon box. 
So, Nancy, I agree with you. We have that. We want to know how you got to label this DNA. How are you able to label the DNA? That's what we want to know. Because it should have just been unidentified, just like the other unidentified male DNAs that you have. So how did how are you able to identify this one and not the other three? The knife shop, uh, and then somebody else bought it, and they're the killer. No, because of that Amazon purchase receipt. Well, Jesus Christ, Nancy. Amazon purchase receipt. Where where do you see this Amazon purchase receipt? Where was Amazon purchase receipt? Where? Where was there ever an Amazon receipt of purchase from Brian Kolberger collected? No, what you have, Nancy, is you have a search warrant. You have a search warrant that searched the who, not Brian Kohlberger, an Amazon purchase receipt. Where is this fucking receipt at? There is no such thing that does not exist. What you have is you have an Amazon search warrant. That's what you have. You have a search warrant from Amazon and Amazon was searching for a knife and a sheath and it wanted any purchases. Okay. So do you know how many hits you're going to get from any purchases of that SKU number? Whoever bought this, read the search warrant. The search warrant was given to Amazon. Okay. Amazon. Boom. Here's your search warrant. This is what we're looking for. This is the SKU number. This is this. This is this. So let me ask you a question, Nancy. Ready? Um, you think that Brian Kohlberger ordered an Amazon K-Bar with a sheath. And he had it delivered to his apartment, right? Okay. What if that Amazon K-Bar that he purchased and that sheet that you say exist that he purchased, what if that was found? What if that was, what if the sheath was found? What if the sheath was found? What if there's, what if Brian's sheath was found at the house, at the apartment, at his parents? How could his sheath be left at the crime scene and also be found in his car or in his apartment or at his parents? What then? Does, is that exonerate him? Because, oh wait, here's his sheath that he purchased. It's right here. It can't be at the crime scene because it's right here. Or would you just say, that's not the same, that's not the same knife. Whatever happens here, Nancy, you're just going to go the opposite way. But it wouldn't like make you pause and say, well, he shouldn't have the sheath because the sheath's in uh, at the evidence locker. But what if Brian had um, the sheath? Because now that would now be some shit, wouldn't it? You can't find the knife, right? But you can find the sheath in Brian's apartment or his parents' house or car. And if there's the sheath, then how can that be his sheath? Wouldn't that be some shit? That'd be wild. Describe that, Chris McDonough. I would say no, I mean, that's he, the fly in the ointment right there. Fly in, in the ointment? The oh, my God. I need to take that, this. Chris McDonough. I would say no, I mean, that's he, the fly in the ointment right there. And it, 
much less on the knife sheath. And we can't claim, uh, oh, this is the knife he looked at at a store, at a knife shop, uh, and then somebody else bought it, and they're the killer. No, because of that Amazon purchase receipt. Describe that, Chris McDonough. <laughs> I would say no, I mean, that's he, the fly in the ointment right there. Where is this receipt? DNA. Explain. No, that's a solid point, Nancy. I agree. And, you know, it's such a low-tech piece of evidence, right, where he orders it and, you know, it's delivered. Now there is a similar knife from Amazon connected to Brian Koberger, according to the reports that we're, that we're hearing. But let's go back to other low-tech information. Wait a minute. Right? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Have... Yes, I'll go back with low-tech information. But I just want to be clear. Okay. Um, police have obtained an Amazon receipt showing Koberger purchased a K-bar knife and sheath from Amazon seven months before the murders. Uh, mm -hmm. that's damning. Wait, wait, because he what? did have Very. a knife matching the knife fam. Wait a second. Wait, where is this? What? Hold on. Ha I, wait, what? I, what is going on here? Hold the door. No fucking way, man. Hold on. What in the world? Oh, wait. <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay. Amazon K Bar. They did a search warrant. Wow. Let me ask you guys this. You know, I've heard of a lot of things in life, okay, during an investigation. During an investigation, I put everything in chronological order of, of when things were searched for the search warrant. On 1126, Amazon K-Bar, they, they hit up to search for Amazon. Hey, let's check Amazon to see if the killer, let's see who bought knives off of Amazon. Do you understand that they went to Amazon? This is the chronological order of the Moscow Police Department's search warrants. They went for the inland towers, the cell towers, 1116, which no historical data came back to Brian Kohlberger. So that would be your first initial dead end. What Nancy's saying right now, we've never heard anything about this. 1119, they went for Bank of America, Cash App, PayPal, Venmo. 1120, they go for the Facebook and they go for Kaylee's Reddit account, but they don't put the search warrant in. They get the search warrant, but they never submit it. They get it stamped by the courts and then they hang on to Kaylee's Reddit search warrant. They never serve it upon Reddit. 1121, Facebook and Instagram for Xana. 1123, 1122, they do Apple and Charter Communications, which is the router and Apple phones. 1125, Moscow Police Department issues an internal be on the lookout for a white Elantra, no year. 1126, 1126, Amazon. 1128, then they go for the federal credit unions, the Idaho Central Credit, Discover Card, um, Idaho Department of Labor, Wells Fargo, Banner Bank, eBay for a K-Bar, American Express. Then 1129, they find Brian Kohlberger's card. Then they go to K-Bar, the actual company, on 11, or on 12-2. 12 4, they do a Google search warrant. 12 5, they do Tinder, only one account, Kaylee's account. 12 6, DoorDash. They got the DoorDash back on 12 6. 12 7, Tinder account number two. Not sure whose account that was. Not 
Now let's listen to what Nancy has to say again. Nancy is saying that there was a Amazon receipt that showed that Brian Colbert purchased an Amazon K-Bar knife seven months before the murder with a sheath. Seven months. Do you know? So, so when he purchased this, Nancy, he was in Pennsylvania. So then therefore, when he purchased this, it should have been mailed to his parents' house because he had only been living in um, Washington for three months. So if he purchased this seven months before the murders, where was he working at at that time, Nancy? Seven months, like, back that all up. So he purchased the K-Bar knife from Amazon before ever knowing anybody. Okay. Just making sure we're clear on that. Seven months before the murders. Mm -hmm. That's damning. Because he did have Very. a knife matching the knife found with his DNA on it. That's pretty damning. Okay. Now, back to low tech info. What were you saying? I, I cannot believe that you aren't fired. This is in fucking sane. Like, you're not speaking facts here. Like, who who's employing this? You saying? Yeah, so you would expect now the defense to produce that knife. And she. So I think the prosecution could put them in a, you know, a prisoner's dilemma, for lack of a better term. Where, in other hey, words, you're saying, you guys, hey, if that's your not your knife that you bought on Amazon, where is it? Then where is yep. your knife? Yeah, bring it, bring it, bring it to court and let's put a number on it and, and you know, put it in evidence. And, and it won't surprise me if some knife does show up, quite frankly, with a sheet. That they you already know that it's there. Uh, you know, just for the theater effect, uh, which, you know, that's good. That's good lawyering. But in this and situation, also, also other, unethical to it's good create fabricate yeah. evidence. Go ahead. It's unethical yeah, to do what? So what let's you're go doing? back also to uh, some of the other information that we have. We we have is we have the vehicle, uh, a Hyundai Elantra that's described. Uh, it's seen on video from that neighbor's. No, actually, Chris, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. No, there. The defense put it clear as day out there. W what video? What What are you talking about? The FBI have not even put the report in yet. Remember, you guys just had like this big old hearing and the woman said, uh, Ingrid said, yeah, the FBI said they would probably have that report to us here in the next couple of weeks. It's in its final stages. So what the fuck are y'all talking about? This is sick. This is fucking so sick, man. Uh, video camera uh, the morning of the homicide uh, we also see it at the gas station no, going and by and so you don't know whose car that is, that is on to well, him uh, so Chris McDonough thinks that the car at the gas station you know what Chris I wasn't going to show this for a minute but I'm going to have to show it here tonight Chris let me ask you a question ready do you know how far it is from um the 1122 King house to the gas station. Do you know how far it is? So if you were to drive from 1122 King, if you were to pull out of the driveway and go to the gas station and come back, how long would it take you? I'm going to tell you how long it would take you. It would take you if you do not get caught by any lights, if you just go and you're going. Um, you're looking at a 10-minute trip. 10-minute trip, okay? So the reason that this is important is because based on the PCA, ready? <clears throat> How can you have the white Elantra on the gas station camera at that timestamp, right? Because it has to be back on the one by the house at a certain time just to even like be able to get there. 
Like, so what you have to do is you have to take the timestamp of the gas station and you got to do a radius of five minutes, five minutes from the time that if it would have just left right back it up five minutes. If you think that you know, it's just, it's right there on camera. So you think it came from the King road house. All right. Well, that car has to get back then over to King road again, because remember it's making all these passes. So how do you explain that there would be a car? Let's see here. A review of the footage from multiple videos obtained from the King Road neighborhood. Never in the PCA does it say that it's taking any camera footage from anywhere else. It says a review of footage from multiple videos obtained from the King Road neighborhood showed multiple sightings of suspect vehicle one starting at 3.29 a.m. and ending at 4.20 a.m. These sightings show suspect vehicle one makes an initial three passes, an initial three passes, okay? It initially passes three times, one, two, and then a third time is three. So three passes, an initial three passes. And then it says, um, that's seen on camera. So that means the fourth time that it passes, it's not caught on camera, to be completely honest. Because if it's going back past it this way, How's it go back this way without it going this way? Um, but it says, um, these sightings show Sussex Vehicle 1 makes initial three passes by 112 King Road residents and then leave Walenta Drive. One, two, three. If it's three and then leaves Walenta Drive, that doesn't even make any fucking sense because Valenta is the other way. So y'all are totally wrong here. Unless you think it went out by Linda Lane because it went past like the Queen Road apartments. But then it doesn't make sense because you say that you, you, you hear a what? A thud and then it's squeeching and squirreling away. You know, this whole time everybody's thought that it went by the house down and around out by Valenta like that. Like the way that we see all the cops come in. But if it in fact went past Queen and went over there by Linda Lane, you can actually go down to get to Taylor. Just so we know. But Sesame Field Code 1 can be seen entering the area a fourth time. Now it says a fourth time. So are they counting the passes by three only going a certain way? But the fourth time now at approximately 4.04 a.m. It can be seen driving eastbound on King, it says, which is not right. Stopping and turning around in front of 500 Queen Road, number 52, which is up by the apartments, and then driving back westbound on King Road. Well, guys, I hate to break this to you, but there's no ring camera that I've ever seen that has this alleged vantage points, okay? Good fucking luck, Chuck. This shit it, it ain't there. Why do you think that we saw a stock image every time they wanted to talk about this car? Because they couldn't produce the car. You know why? Because it looks like a little fucking dot. That's why. They've never been able to produce this car for us to all look and, and say that, hey, have you seen this car? They had to produce a stock image of the car because the image that they would produce is not producible to, for you to say like, oh my God, that looks like an Elantra. Yeah, I've seen that before. We're all going to say to ourselves, um, that looks like the fucking Milky Way. But you guys are over here acting like they have all this shit that we've never seen. And you're making up what you think things are. This is not, this is what people that could be potential jurors see because they, they don't watch YouTube. They, they, they watch this shit. And guess what? Big money is backing this shit from the car, i.e. just the car description. But the low tech piece of this is that officer at Washington State University who took the initiative to start looking for that Hyundai through all the parking records 
uh, at the university. And lo and behold, they come across a Hyundai that belongs to Brian Kohlberg, Washington State University. Uh, we also see it at the gas station going by. And so the police were on to him uh, from the car, i.e. just the car description. But the low tech piece of this is that officer at Washington State University who took the initiative to start looking for that Hyundai through all the parking records uh, at the university. And That's not what happened, Chris. Nobody took an initiative to do anything. Nobody took an initiative. Moscow put out a be on the lookout on the 25th. So let me ask you this, Chris. If they put the be out on the lookout on the 25th, the day after 1125, after Thanksgiving, when you were there, Chris, you're telling me then they should have called in if they were looking for these cars. There was multiple white Elantras that met this description. Then there should be multiple tips that went in. So on this day, from 1125 to 1129, why do you think that they want to know how many tips came in and that they want the tips? Why do you think they want the tips? Just the tips, guys. Because they want to know from this officer and the officer, there's two officers that found the vehicle, not just one. There was two that found it within 20 minutes. Why do you think, because they want to know what other white Elantras y'all found. If you're typing it in exactly what you think that they did. No, this is all a bunch of, this is all a bunch of bullshit. Okay. Why didn't they use and talk about the FBI doing genealogy tree in, in their probable cause? Because you can't, right? because that can't be a tool used to what arrest somebody, but it was, it was used to arrest somebody. And, and we'll get to all of that, but wouldn't you think it's kind of funny if there's no tips that came in from WSU's officers to say, well, I walked around and I found 36 white Elantras. Here you go. You never gave me a year. So I just went with any white Elantra that I saw. During my shift, I turned it in. There you go. There's your 36 Elantras that I went through. That's what it should look like. It should look like, well, when I was working this day, this is what I this is what I came across while I was working. I came across 36 white Elantras and here's all the information. Why would you just be turning in one? <laughs> Okay, the fuck out of here. You guys believe this shit? If you're a detective, if you're a police officer, you're going around on your shift and you're collecting all the intel to give to the to people, you would never go and say, oh my God, I found this one white Elantra. Here you go. When there's fucking 30 of them, you would say, here, I went through and I sorted them all out. Here they are. I went from, I put them in, um, here's the Excel. So it's the oldest year to the more recent, whatever. These are all the ones that we were able to find during our shift. Now, that's how it should look. If it doesn't, then these officers get to be asked, well, you just came to one white Elantra and that's the only tip you turned in? You didn't continue to, was there no other Elantras on campus? That's why I can't wait for this shit. This is why they want to know how, what was your meth methodology to get to what the fuck you got to. This is what they're asking for. Where are these reports? Where are these reports? And when people say this isn't going to make it to trial, this is how it makes it to trial. You're going to put on freaking frack on the stand and you're going to say, Mr. Frick, how long have you worked for WSU's... Um, force. Oh, four years. Let's say, okay, great. All right. Well, it says here that you turned in a tip. Let's get this right here. Um, and then I came across your report and you filled out a report and it says that on November, on November 25th, you were notified that you guys were supposed to be on the lookout for a white Elantra. How did they notify you? 
Did they send you guys an email? How did that go out? Did they tell you not to tell anybody about it? Did they say, hey, this is, keep this quiet? How did, how did, how does that go? Okay. So yeah, Mr. Daniel Tenego and, and Mr. What's this other motherfucker's name? Let's see. Mr. Tenego and Mr. Whitman. You guys found the same car within 20 minutes of each other. Were you guys using a radio that day? So when you found the car at 12.28 a.m., did you radio in to say, hey, I came across, or did you just take a piece of paper and a pen? And what did you do when you found, you know, you were driving around and you found this white Elantra, what would you do? You just took a paper, pen, wrote it down. Did you radio it in and run the plates? So it should be on radio then? Okay. And then after you found that, did you drive around to find other ones? You were just like driving through parking lots, looking through parking lots to find white cars? So how many other cars did you radio in while you were working? That was the only one. That's the only one? You only found one? Why don't you just go to the university and ask them for um, anybody that filled out a parking permit? Can you look up and see who has white Elantras? Or actually, fuck white. Put an Elantra and give me the printout. Isn't that what you guys did? It says that it says that on, a, on November 29th at approximately 12.28 a.m., Washington State University police officer Daniel Tenego, you, you queried when it says that you queried white Elantras registered at WSU, how did you do that? How do you query that? Can you explain that to the to the jury? But yeah, we have a computer, and we went into it, and you type in, and then you get a printout of, okay, so you get a printout of what? The names of the people with the white Elantras and what the address that they put with it if they filled out a slip? Yeah. Okay, so as a result of that query, he located a 2015 white Elantra with a Pennsylvania license plate. So did you get others back from your query? How many? How many? <clears throat> the same day at approximately 12.58 a.m., just 30 minutes later, WSU officer Curtis Whitman was looking for white Hyundai Elantras as well. So let me ask you something. You guys were told to look for these on November 25th. How many days did you work prior to November 29th? Did you work on the 26th? Did you work on the 27th? Did you work on the 28th? Did you try to look for the white Elantras on the 25th, 6th, or 7th? No. No. What time does your shift start? You found these at 12.58 and 12.28 a.m. What time does your shift start? So, Officer Curtis Whitman finds the same vehicle. that officer Daniel Tenego finds within 30 minutes of each other, but for four fucking days, nobody finds this vehicle. So nobody, you guys are the first people to query about this. Um, would you just drive around in your vehicle? Like what did you do when you came to the white Elantra and you found it like what what was the purpose of like because because no offense here let me ask you let me ask you this once you would have queried and found that you had let's say a list of there's 36 on campus you have your list right so why did you have to drive around to find them if you already knew that they existed why would you drive around to try to locate them if you already knew they existed. Were you planning on talking? 
Like you've already located them. You already, you, you queried them. Um, so you have a list here. These are the, what were you, what's the difference if you just hand over the queried Intel to officer Payne? By you going up to the car, for example, and locating it physically, what is, what did that, like, why did you have to do that? Why didn't you give Officer Payne the query of your printout prior to finding them? They were there. They're on campus. Here you go. Were you told to go in them? Were you told to locate the owner and knock on the door and ask them questions? So my question is, is why would you need to go any further than after you, you located them? You found, here, I have addresses to, here's White Elantras I have addresses to. Here you go. Here's the person. Here's the owner. You have it all. So I don't understand what physically locating it, you know, everything that you're writing in this report would be on November 25th, 2022, MPD asked area law enforcement agencies to be on the lookout for white Hyundai Elantras in the area on November 25th. You did not give a year. You did not have a year. On November 29th at approximately 12.28 a.m., Washington State University police officer Daniel Tenego queried white Elantras registered at WSU. As a result of that query, he located a 2015 white Elantra with a Pennsylvania license plate LFZ. This vehicle was registered to Brian Kohlberger hereafter Kohlberger residing at 1630 Northeast Valley Road, apartment 201. It is approximately three quarters of a mile from the intersection of Stadium Way and Cougar Way, last camera location that picked up the white Elantra. The same day at approximately 12 at the 8 a.m., WSU officer Curtis Whitman was looking, looking. Now, there's a difference. So isn't it true, Mr. Daniel Tenego, that you actually never went and found the um, the white Elantra. You just queried them and had like a, basically an Excel spreadsheet that had them all. And then you handed it over to whomever, right? You, based on this language, didn't actually physically go find this motherfucking car, did you? You just happened to have a list of them. And did you turn over the whole list? But you know what I think is interesting, Mr. Tenego, is that literally with 20 minutes later, or I'm sorry, 30, the same the same day at approximately 12 at the 8 a.m., WSU officer Curtis Whitman was looking, looking for white Hyundai Elantras and located a 2015 white Hyundai Elantra at 1630 North. So he located it at that address. Now, did you ever talk to Curtis Whitman via radio? What did you do with your, when you queried this, what did you do with it? Did you over the radio give out all of these? Hey, I found 59 white Elantras. Here we go, guys. These are the addresses. You didn't put that over the radio, did you? Did you happen to come in contact with Curtis Whitman from 1228 AM until 1258 AM? Did you give him, here's the list I printed. Here's, I'll take half. You take the other half. And you guys were running around searching for these cars. You guys would never do such a thing, would you? That's fucking, who's going to do such a thing? So you never gave Curtis Whitman what you had. And Curtis Whitman happened to just find one, one white Elantra, the same one that you queried about and... And that it was at the at the WSU students. It was at the housing center. Six. He located at sixteen thirty Northeast Valley Road. Officer Whitman also ran the car, and it returned to Kohlberger with a Washington tag. Do you know why they had to say it that way, guys? You want to know how they ran it? Because he queried, and it would be the information that when you actually first got on campus and you filled out your little slip and you put down what your car was, what all the stuff was, is you had to write down 
um, your license plate number and everything like that. So this would have been his Pennsylvania tag. But the only way that you would have realized, or I'm sorry, yeah, the actual would be would be PA. But if you actually went to the vehicle and you found the vehicle, you found it, and you called it in, that you would be calling it in based off of the license plate, okay? So you want me to sit here and you want me to believe that from two, from November 25th, 2022 to, to November 29th, this is like shocked the, the world, the nation, and especially your county, that what did y'all do on the 25th, 26th, 27th, and 28th that you couldn't find this vehicle until the 29th when two dudes find it within 30 minutes of each other, but they use different methods to get there and they don't talk to each other. You don't want me to believe that. I reviewed Kohlberger's Washington state driver's license information and photograph. The license indicated that Kohlberger is a white male, blah, blah, blah. This is why they want the information on the tips. They want to know when this was turned over. They want to know what the radio communication was. And because all it should just be is we ran the query. Here you go. These are all the white Elantras that are registered to any students. Here you go. Officer Payne gets it. He would have had a list of them. Okay, let's, let's look and see who these people are. You know, there would have been a huge list. It, it would have never been turned over like, here you go. Here's one car that we found. What? No, that's not how that would work. Especially when you query white Elantras. And when you would have done that, more than one would have shown up. So that whole tip that he did when he queried them. Officer Payne should be seeing a whole list of them. It wouldn't be until you got to, well, then when Whitman does it, he would have, y'all, they're going to fucking rot. They're going to fucking drill this. They're going to drill this. This is insanity. And if I was a parent, I'd be so fucking pissed because I want who killed my kid. I'd want everybody involved. When they gave it to WSU, I have no idea if they even gave years because in the PCA, they don't mention years. And this is what they mentioned in the motion. They say, we're trying to understand, did you guys get to Brian Kohlberger because of the vehicle or because of this genealogy? How did you get to him? And I don't understand how these people on mainstream media want to act like they are either this is stupid or they're just getting paid. So I'm going to say whatever the fuck y'all want. Cause I'm getting paid. That's the difference between me and you. No one's paying and me to say behold, shit. They come across a Hyundai that belongs to Brian Kohlberger. Uh, and next thing you know what, they have a name. That name, very low tech wow. leads them to the DNA. You're right. Can you imagine that officer, an officer, uh, a campus officer at WSU, Washington State University, hears about, hey, they're looking for a white Elantra. So Washington State <laughs> is about 10 miles ish from the murder scene. Nancy, you just fucking said so it. He, on his own, just starts looking through the records and he finds an Elantra registered to Brian Koberger. Because if you live on student housing, you have to register your car and a lot of other information. So he goes driving around. He No, that's not what happened, Nancy. That's fucking not what happened. Okay, Nancy? I knew that you'd fucking botch the fuck out of this. So I just told this all before you got to open up your big fat fucking mouth. But let's hear you lie. Starts looking through the records and he finds an Elantra registered to Brian K. An Elantra. So Washington state is about 10 miles ish from the murder scene. So he, he on his own just starts looking through the records and he finds he didn't do this on his own.
There was a be on the lookout. There's nothing on your own. That's your fucking job. What do you mean on his own? He's getting paid to do his fucking job, Nancy. An Elantra registered to Brian K. Berger. Because if you live on student housing, you have to register your car and a lot of other information. So he goes driving around. He hooks up with another officer. They start driving around. That's not what fucking hole, happened. Said, there it is. No, that's right not there what happened. Right at his. Nancy, what in the fuck are you talking about? That's not what happened at all. Nancy, unless you are given blows to get fucking intel, okay, where in the world are you getting this information? On November 25th, 2022, the MPD asked area law enforcement agencies to be on the lookout for white Hyundai Elantras in the area. On November 29th, so four fucking days later, Nancy, at 12.28 a.m., Washington State University Police Officer Daniel Tenego, one male, queried. He typed it in, Nancy. He queried it. He wrote it in. Got a fucking list to pop up. Queried white Elantras registered at WSU. As a result of that query, he located a 2015 white Elantra because of that query, he located it. It does not say that he physically drove to anywhere with anybody to give people handies on the way there. He typed it in, and that's how he found a 2015 white Honda Elantra with the Pennsylvania with Pennsylvania license plates LFZ. How do you think, Nancy, that he ever found out that that Brian Kohlberger had Pennsylvania plates? The only way you would find that out, Nancy, is when you query it and it comes back to give you the actual license plate that you signed up with the motherfucker when you first went to school, which was Pennsylvania plates. Then the other guy, miraculously, 30 minutes after this fucker does that, this other guy's driving around and he finds a car that he just wants to like, woo, we should just jump and down for joy. Because he found a fucking white Elantra. Well, he should have found like 50, 60, 70, 80 of them. But let's hear your story. I need a laugh. Is a second floor apartment right out in front of it. And that is where it all began. Right there, very low tech, Chris McDonough. You're right. Then they figure out that he's about to leave for Thanksgiving break and they follow him. You are so wrong. <laughs> if you say Thanksgiving break one more time, Nancy. <laughs> ah, Nancy. You know, my mom's name's Nancy, man. And I don't know who watches your programs, but. They cannot all the way to the Poconos, and that is where they get the dad's DNA, and that DNA matches back to. Let me ask you a question, Nancy. Did they find all these white Elantras on campus and then follow everybody home during Thanksgiving break <laughs> to take everybody else's daddy's DNA so they could see if it was a match to the fucking sheath, Nancy? Because that's what good policing would do. How do you get to Brian Koberger? How would you zero in on Brian Koberger? How would I say, hey, I think you need to file that car home versus you need to file, file, file him or him or her or her or her. Y'all are wild if you believe this shit. This is the most fucked up shit I've ever seen. So much so that Ann Taylor had the cahoons to write in a motion with Jay and say the sheath was placed next to, next to the body. Nancy, on your level that you're talking about here, this low level, then multiple cars should have been followed to go get daddy DNA. And why wasn't it? 
how in the world, Nancy, would you be able to zone in on this man versus everybody else? You just randomly, you know what, this guy, this is who we should follow. Out of all the core eating Elantras, this guy. Nancy, the answer to that is it's in the work process. I should be able to show you. If you had me on your show and I was a detective on this case, I said, Nancy, let me tell you something. We went through 364 white Elantras that were combined between Pullman and Moscow, 364 of them. You know what we did? We eliminated the women because we didn't believe that a woman did it. So that eliminated half of the white Elantra owners. But guess what, Nancy? Maybe their husbands took out the vehicle that night. So we have to bring back in the 150 that we just took out. Then we went ahead and saw, where do these people work? Who works night shift? Who's even available to go in the night? Da -da 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 -da. Then we just followed everybody and we just grabbed all their DNA, Nancy. And then we just put it through CODIS. <laughs> there would be a process of elimination, okay, that you'd be able to do. That would take a long time if it was old school policing. Nancy, what you're talking about right here. You're talking about what's the term you use? I call it good old fashioned, like boots on the ground, fucking shit up. All began right there. Very low tech. Chris McDonough, oh, you're low right. Tech, that's right. Low tech. I just call it just police work. Um, <laughs> Nancy, they just want to know how you got to Brian Koberger. How did you eliminate all the other people that have white Elantras in the area? The 22,000 cars that we all heard about. How do you eliminate them? How do you even investigate them to eliminate them? Then they figure out that he's about to leave for Thanksgiving break and they follow him all the way to the Poconos. You know how fucking nuts that sounds right now, Nancy? Oh, they find out. How How would they find out that he's about to leave, Nancy? How about that? How would they find out that he was about to leave, Nancy, so they would follow him? How? Which you're completely wrong because he did not leave in Thanksgiving. But I just, whenever he would have left, how would he, have, how do you find that out? Did you ask him? Did you call him up? Did you say, hey? Hey, you know what? Nobody knows this, but we're looking for white Elantras. And we and we found out that you're you know that you have one. Wild, Nancy. Wild that you get on live and, and do this. And that is where they get the dad's DNA. And that DNA matches back to the knife sheet. Then let me ask you this, Nancy. Why didn't they use the dad's DNA? when they search the parent for any of these search warrants other than to arrest Brian Kohlberger. Why didn't they use it? Why would you need three different affidavits for your probable cause statement? Does that not bother you, Nancy? And if you got the guy by the balls, then you should just do it the right way. And they do another DNA match. It's Koberger. How did you get that other DNA match? It's because you were able to arrest him. They needed. Judge Megan was not signing off on the arrest of Brian Koberger without DNA. Do you understand this? The only way that they could get the DNA is to do what they did. Which was to what? Extract the dad's DNA. But how? They did it illegally, illegally so much that good old Dawn Daniels, who doesn't have a fucking problem cheating because she did it back in 19 or 2000 with that Brian guy. And they were using the Chase credit card to buy strippers and Hooters girls. OK, go back and watch my episode on that. They were using company cards back at WSU. Police officers were they were putting on their fences. You name it. They all had company cards. They were just charging the shit out of their company car. And they wanted to fire the one black guy. Well, the black guy ended up getting his job back because he's like, uh-uh, hell no. He sued their asses. He won. Don Daniels was part of that. So Don Daniels has no problem. But here Don Daniels stands up and she's like, oh, hell no. I'm coming clean. I heard that somehow, some way, Don Daniels told 
the Washington judge, please do not issue this search warrant on the fact of this DNA. We believe that it could possibly be fruit from the poisonous tree that would throw out your whole... We have a feeling that in case this isn't, doesn't stand up. Well, Don, where did you get this feeling that it might not stand up? I have never heard a police officer do that. Like, wh what would give you that inkling that it was obtained illegally? Who the fuck does this? I mean, who, be but see, guess what? If I'm not talking about it, then it makes Nancy Grace like, oh my God, yeah, look at all this evidence. Nancy, y'all have shit. Dead in the water and the case goes on. You're right. Yeah, exactly. Very low. Then why didn't you go to the fucking, why did you need to go to the grand jury? Why didn't you go preliminary hearing? So to be so transparent with the community. The tech. Yep. And, and, you know, being in that, I, I, I know that. And don't even get me started with Chris Madonna planting evidence in what was it? Uh, the crown case, right? I mean, we're really going to go there. Crow versus County of San Diego, I believe it was. Let me make sure I'm right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And it ain't even the glove. He didn't find the glove. Get the fuck up out of here, man. I can't believe it. You get this, you know, piece of information as a case agent, and you go... Okay, well, who's this guy? Who is this guy? And, you know, let's get on this quickly. And lo and behold, you know, that chain of events started this domino effect pretty quickly uh, to where the surveillance, you know, the, the feds get involved, you know, interstate because it's in Pennsylvania. You know, you get the state police involved. But well, uh, the state police don't have shit to do with it. And that's where you you're know, wrong. You start doing interviews behind the scenes on the phone, you know, hey, Hey, we've got this Honda, you know, this white Honda Elantra out, Elantra out here, and you know we're investigating, you know, the case, blah blah blah. Can you tell us a little bit about your guy out there? What do you know about it? Okay. And that whole flow of information starts to come. So now, then, we see it <laughs> at the trial side of things, and you've had hundreds of cases, Nancy. I, you know, you're a brilliant attorney in the courtroom. I can only imagine you know, watching people get eviscerated uh, by your skill. But uh, you know more than anybody, the last thing you want is inf information presented on your desk and we're missing something from the investigative side, right? You want it all. If it's good, if it's bad, just give it to me. I'll deal with it in the courtroom. And so where I'm going with this point is, now we start seeing these motions start to come forward about the officers involved. And, you know, it's... Oh, wait, wait, wait a second there, Chris. Hold on. That's not what we saw first. That didn't come up until the fact that you wouldn't turn over the discovery. When you wouldn't turn over the discovery, all right, because they started asking for it in January, January, February, March, April, May, how many requests compel, compel, supplemental one, supplemental two, three, four? How many times did they have to ask, Chris? Okay. And then it finally got brought up in the last one about these officers training. You know why, Chris? Because they didn't have the shit. Because the body cams showed stuff. These officers are involved with cases in the past two years where they railroaded suspects. So you're goddamn right. Wait, yes, yes, yes. Let me clarify what you just said. You're right, number yep. one. What Chris McDonough is talking about is a flurry of, emotion, flurry of emotions that have just been filed, questioning all sorts of information, uh, questioning. Wait, wait, are they questioning the information 
Nancy, or are they just asking for the information? Asking for information is not questioning the information, Nancy. They're asking for the information. They are requesting the discovery. And they had to lay it so fucking blunt as to, fine, you want me to start saying names? I need this officer, Tolson, Vargas, and um, I don't know if they meant to say Gunnerson or if it was Gunderson, if there was a, if there was a typo. But they went ahead and had to, because they asked four fucking times, Nancy. So they had to announce, like, these are, these are the different things that they've not complied with. And then they say, we don't believe it's the prosecution doing anything wrong. We don't believe that the prosecution is doing anything wrong. Meaning, AKA, the police officers have not turned it over to them. And that is what you call plausible deniability. And the police officers are providing that for the prosecution. If I don't have it, I can I can honestly go in there and I can say, guys, listen, we don't have it. Once we get it, we'll give it to you. Well, listen, you motherfuckers, you know it exists because they needed to, to type up all these stupid reports, okay, to get, what did you, how did you get the grand jury to indict Brian Colbert? What'd you use? Where's all the shit that you gave the grand jury? What, you just said, hey, trust this grand jury. Here, this is what happened. So they didn't see any evidence. They didn't see any of these reports. Wild, just fucking wild. You can indict a ham sandwich. The officers who worked on who worked on the case, their histories, their training, have they ever had a complaint? Um, can I ask you something, Chris McDonough? Have you ever called the cable company and said, guys, I just watched the most incredible movie on Amazon Prime. And I just want to thank you for doing such a great job as a cable carrier. Have you ever said that? Ever? I haven't. Okay. Whenever. <laughs> God, God. Shut up, Nancy. Look, listen to this analogy. You got to be shitting me right now. They ever had a complaint. Um, can I ask you something, Chris McDonough? Have you ever called the cable company and said, guys, I just watched the most incredible movie on Amazon Prime? And I just want to thank you for doing such a great job as a cable carrier. Have you ever said that? Ever? I haven't. Okay. <laughs> Whenever there's a problem, I bet you get on the horn with cable, right? You got my cables out. Yeah. Fix it. Okay. Yes. Same thing with police officers. Well, see, that's that's where your analogy just blows right there. I'm going to blow it up for you. The If your cable goes out, it is the cable company's problem, Nancy. If I didn't like the fucking movie that I watched, I wouldn't call the cable company to say, or if I liked it, I wouldn't be applauding the cable company for me liking something, Nancy. If I liked a movie... It had nothing to do with the cable company, Nancy. If I wanted to see movies that the cable company wasn't showing, I guess I could call up my provider and say, hey, why are you no longer carrying Nancy Grace's show anymore? And this news and this and this and this. Why aren't don't you have these channels anymore? That's what the cable company is providing me with, right? Nancy, your analogy is almost as good as if my fucking uncle had a dick or if my aunt had a dick, she'd be my uncle or some shit. Nancy, this is just wild. And people fucking just sit here and listen. Just wow. Why the hell would I call up my cable company and say, oh, my God, I just watched the best show on your – that was the best – that was the best Wheel of Fortune I've ever saw Pat Sajak do in my life. And now that Ryan Seacrest is going to take over, I'm just totally not going <laughs> to get out, man. Like, you, you just don't even make any sense, man. You just so I guess, Nancy, we're going to have to go ahead and agree to disagree. But if my aunt had a dick, she'd be my uncle. So what the fuck is your point?
All right. She doesn't. She's my aunt. Have you ever called the cable company and said, guys, I just watched the most incredible movie on Amazon Prime. And I just want to thank you for doing such a great job as a cable carrier. Have you ever said that? Ever? I haven't. Okay. <laughs> Whenever there's a problem, thank God, I bet Chris. you get on the horn with cable, right? You got my cables out. Yeah. Fix it. Okay. Yes. Same thing with police officers. The only people that call in is where is when they say, "Hey, he was really rude to me." Or I've never called a, any type of person, especially police, and said, "Hey, this person was really rude to me." In fact, every time that I see law enforcement, I always say, "Thank you for your service," because it ain't easy doing what they do. Um, Nancy. I think it's time to retire. She pulled me over for no reason. Or she did that. And he did this and blah, blah, blah. Maybe some of them are true. Don't know about that. But there's going to be complaints on every officer. Just like every cable TV. And this country. They're not there to complain, Nancy. How do you know this is a complaint issue? How do you know this is a complaint issue? It's not a complaint issue, Nancy. They're not here to complain. Okay? This is about a procedural issue. What do you think the law is about? You've been doing it. It's all about judicial procedure, procedure, procedure. If something is done um, incorrectly with procedure, Nancy, what the fuck do you think happens? You've been involved with law. That's how you, that's what it's all about is about procedure. You cannot do your job the wrong way and think that that's okay. Like, I, I cannot believe that. Do you, does she ever listen to, does anybody that cares about this woman call her up and say, hey, Nancy, did you hear yourself last night? Procedure is everything in the courtroom. Procedure, procedure, judicial. <laughs> What's a judicial error, Nancy? Procedural error, right? Just, I mean, I don't know how much they're paying you, girl, but I got to tell you this. Kudos to you because you can come out here and get paid to say this shit. And it must be nice. I got to grind for my dollars, girl. I got to grind. You, well, I oughta. Well, I oughta. Tree goes out and somebody gets a complaint. It happens. So the defense wants every complaint, the training records. They didn't ask for every complaint, Nancy. They said they wanted training records. How would training records go into your brain and say, oh my God, they want my complaints. They want anybody that's complained about me. Why do you, why would I ever give a shit if Mr. Smith wanted to call and complain and say that, Hey, I think so-and-so is a lazy fat fuck. How would that be relevant, Nancy? It wouldn't. Right. But now if two time Tommy calls up and says, um, I have a ring camera here and I had officers over here and I have them on my ring camera and they are beating the shit out of some, out of some guy. I think you guys should take a look at this. And they get excessive force, whatever it may be. But here there's evidence of them doing something or, or better yet, if they say that they're, trained for trauma response and blah, 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 crisis, blah, 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 that they did all of this and they're claiming that they're this, that, or the other. And they're not, Nancy. If they were never taught how to, I mean, homicides don't happen in Moscow. These officers that were first responders walked in there and what did they do to, you know, protect the crime scene? Um, and not contaminate it. You know, it, it's just. Nancy, for you to be doing a show and be talking about any of this is just wild to me. Because you're wrong. It's the, everything on every officer that worked on this case. That's not true. That is not they true. She does not want lot. that. She wants three officers, Nancy. So stop exaggerating with your big eyeshadow. Okay, I said it. <laughs> 
<laughs> Stop lying as big as your eyeshadow, Nancy. <laughs> they want the genealogical tree data. Why wouldn't they, Nancy? You can't just make a tree out of nowhere. Like, how does your tree get so big, Nancy? You had to plant it. What'd you use? How'd you make it? Where'd you go? Where'd you get this? Where'd you get the soil? Like, what the fuck? They just want to know how you did it. But Nancy, if you did it the right way, why should any of this fucking matter? None of it should matter. You should just give it. Like, if it's so like, oh my God, God forbid them ask for this. Nancy, if y'all did it the right way, none of this should matter. Here you go. And guess who said it? I will give Coffin Gobbler. Just kidding, Jen. Much respect to it, your profession. Um, I just think you're getting bad intel. Um, she said, you know what has me hung up? Jen said this. She says, you know, I don't get it. They want these, they want these training records. Just give them, just turn them over. Just give them. Like, what's the big, give them. They want these three officers, give them. Jen said that. Me and Jen, we agree on that. Give them the stupid training records. What's the problem? We want to make sure that you were um, trained and qualified to do all the things that you said that you know that you did. If the, if the if the if the scene has been compromised, how and why was it compromised? And Nancy, there's I mean they're just asking for stuff. What does it mean? Why is everybody so defensive about this? Why are you guys already being defensive before anything would to come out about it? I could see you being defensive about it after you were to read that, let's say, I don't know, um, Officer Bobby Blobber, you know, shit, he's not even, he's an EMT. <laughs> he's a cop, you know, whatever it may be. But that's like saying to me, hey, you want a job, you have to have a, you know, you have to have these things this degree, this, you know, this, that four years in this, whatever. Okay. So I go ahead and I make it all up and I hand it in and, and I have a job, let's say for a couple of years. Well then sweet Susie who went to college with me, she's like, what the hell? How does Lana have that position? She didn't do this, that or the other. This isn't her field and blah, blah, blah. And then somebody says, Lana, I want to see this, that, or the other of all your, you know, what? No. Why? Why do you want to see? Well, because somebody's attesting to the fact that you forge documents or whatever it may be. And I'm being asked to supply these for my job. You know what I mean? Like that's like anything. This is somebody's life on the line. Four people were murdered and we just want to dot I's and cross T's and the fucking prosecution and all of America is losing their dicks. Why? Does it make any sense? You guys should just be like, wow, this is amazing that Brian Kohlberger or anybody in this situation that would be needing a public defender is getting this type of a defense because you don't see this. This doesn't happen. This you know how many people would sell their kidneys and whatever they could possibly sell to have a defense like this? A lot of people. It's just wild. Ann Taylor's doing her job, and people are basically saying, why are you doing your job? Well, taxpayers in Idaho need to wake the fuck up because let me tell you something. You have a $1.4 billion surplus that's coming and your police are making decisions to cancel like uh, training. $1.4 billion surplus. And you guys are saying you guys don't have any money. That's what your cops are telling you. Look into it, y'all. I'd move from Idaho. They want navigational data on the car because that means they're going to challenge the state's navigational data and the cell phone data. Show Honey, there is no navigational data. 
where have you seen in anywhere they say that we pulled um, the navigational data off of Brian's car? <laughs> oh my God, this is insane. Dude, what in the fuck, Nancy? If I don't know how this is legal. I, I don't know how this is legal. I don't know how how what you're saying is legal right now, Nancy. Knowing that he took that circuitous route, leaving the home to get to his place the night of the murders. But you brought up the cops. Let's go with that. What does that mean to you? Why are they wanting uh, training records of, of all the officers on the case, even their training records before they were even? Nancy, you know, you have lost it. Did you watch the hearing? Now, I want to hear. See, this is me. If I was to be Chris right now, I would say, Nancy, you're mistaken. She only wants three training records. Let's see if Chris has some balls to tell Nancy that she's wrong. Even a cop. Well, yes, and that, that's character reference. <laughs> right? they, want, they want to impeach these officers. They, oh, damn it, Chris. Nancy Grace has you by your balls. Ugh, I'm going to need to. I'm going to need a twisted T for that one there, Chris. I just can't even believe it. She wants, she wants training records for everybody. Well, Nancy, all I want is training wheels with my vodka. <laughs> oh, shit, Chris. Oh, shit. Nancy Disgrace, man. I don't even understand it, Nancy. We're almost done here. Um, yeah, if I would have been on the show, I would have been like, well, Nancy, I don't know where you got that from, that she wants everybody's training records. Um, but what she is asking for, she wants three specific officers um, due to the... Um, they're, they're that material for the case. So uh, I don't know what else to tell you, Nancy. I don't know if you need to get some new glasses or a pair of glasses or you need your ears checks. I, I don't know. But the sad thing is, is that potential jurors are watching this shit. And, and this is what they get to hear is how guilty Brian Colbert already is. God. On something. If, if those officers take the stand to testify on the people's case. And so I think it's important for your audience to understand that when, when you go to the police academy, they immediately start to keep records. And there are three types of records. There's uh, basic, intermediate, and advanced. And it's usually through an accreditation uh, like post, you know, in California where I did my time as it's a, the same you know, thing in Idaho outside. post we had post which is the peace officer standards of training that's the same thing they have in Idaho and those records are kept by your department guess who runs and post they're separate from the public's you know guess who runs post Mr. McDonough do you know who runs post for Idaho who teaches classes none other than officer detective Gary Tolson that's one of the records that she's asking for is Gary Tolson's. And if you haven't seen it, I have an episode um, a day or two before this. Gary Tolson. Um, check him out. He's a gem. You know, to your point, Nancy, the public coming in and saying, hey, this officer was, you know, unfriendly to me. And I want to file a, you know, talk to a supervisor. That's not what the fuck she wants. And, you know, sometimes officers get written in their, you know, their, uh, record you know that he was rude etc i counseled him etc etc which is no big deal i mean that happens that's life we make mistakes police make mistakes but in the training records those are those are you know controlled typically by the in california the california department of justice so doj oversees those training records but there's a copy kept at the agency and that just basically, you know, tells everybody, look, I went to this school, this school, this school. But in those school. training records, won't it say something like uh, this trainee is too aggressive or this trainee 
screwed up X, Y, or Z. Why don't they just get the kindergarten records out and say, hey, when he was three years old, officer. Nancy, are you fucking out of your mind? You just made a, a point to say that Brian Koberger stole a fucking cell phone and that he stole a cell phone and that goddamn it, he would have had to murder people then. You're the one that's comparing kindergarten records to fucking murder. I cannot even believe what it's out of your the analogies that this woman makes is just by far fucking out of woo, Nancy. Well, let's just go get his kindergarten records. No, Nancy, what training records tell you is what you've become certified for. What are you certified in? Your training. What, what do you have to say that you can do X, Y, and Z? If you have a title that says that you're a detective, if you have a title that says you're this, well, did they just label you a detective because, oh my God, we need, we, we just need you to go and investigate this um, robbery. Uh, you know, Nancy, name the place because I want to just inform you of the facts that you have wrong. I will keep it above the bra. But your facts, you want an analogy, you you go right ahead. You ask me something or you say something and it is factually incorrect. I'm going to correct you on the spot. And, and nobody has the balls to invite anybody on their show that they feel like could you know, make them look bad. Well then don't be bad. You know, you don't want to have people on your show because it's going to make you look bad. Well, fucking don't be bad. Do the right thing. Report the right way and you won't look bad. Nobody can. White picked his nose in kindergarten. What about <laughs> that? I mean, who knows what's going to be in the training records. They're really digging deep here. So that's what they're yes. after. Anything that could somehow discredit one of the cops on this case. But they're also demanding additional cell phone record data and FBI forensic reports on the white Hyundai. What are they going to do with FBI reports on the Hyundai? What's that all about? Is it about evidence found or not? How do you not know what that's about, Nancy? Like, are you playing dumb? Are you playing dumb to see if Chris is going to, like, you know, say something? What do they want? What they want from the FBI is where's your report that says that you even labeled this a white Hyundai Elantra 2011, 2013. When did you change your report to that? It would be a 2000 and all the way to 16 because I've beat it like a B on this channel to show you how much of a difference a 2016 is from a 2011 and when the models changed and they changed after 2014. So you can't even say that anybody that's, oh, this could be a 2014 to 2016. No, it can't because it's that much of a difference from a 2014 to 2016. I destroyed it. And I'm nobody, but my method, my methodology is accurate. And when you use the same methodology for multiple things, you could be actually, I could be actually a, an expert witness for, for that because I could show the method of which I got to that conclusion. That's what it's all about. Um, this is just fucking wild. Not found in the car, or is it about the tracking system? It's none of that. Well, I think it's both. What? And it's also, <laughs> I think they're going to attack the fact that they had the wrong view. <laughs> oh, there uh, you go, initially. Chris. Uh, when you know the initial reporting came out, it was a different year Hyundai than what actually you know Koberger owned. Oh blah but blah blah. Exactly. If they're missing the if it's the point, wrong car, it it's the wrong Hyundai. you guys how do you say blah blah? If I show you a car and I show you that the lights are here, but if it's Brian's car, the lights have to be down here, but they're up here. But the lights are down here. His car needs to be here. And, and the car that you keep showing, the lights are down here and they need to be up here. So, therefore, the car is not Brian's car. This is blah, blah, blah. What the fuck are you talking about? Blah, blah, blah. This is unbelievable.
What do you mean, blah, blah, blah? The only thing tying Brian Koberger, um, as far as what's the word I want to use, circumstantial evidence, is your fucking white Hyundai Elantra. That's your circumstantial, okay? Is that, because white Hyundai Elantras don't fucking murder people with knives, Nancy. You don't have a video of Brian getting in and out of that car. You don't have a video of Brian entering the house. You don't have dick, Nancy. That's what you don't have. And you just keep going and telling America and the rest of the fucking world that you have all this shit on a guy that you don't. And once you do have it, then go ahead and say it. But until you do, shut the fuck up. Because this is bullshit. And it is white. And it is an Elantra. And it is his. Have you, wait, wait, Nancy, then why did they use a stock exactly. image? Nancy, if it's so clear, why did they use a stock image? Have you ever seen that in all the years that you've been fucking doing true crime? Have you ever seen them have a car but put out a stock image? Because I haven't. Nancy, have you? Because I want you to go dig deep and find it. Get out of here. You have to send this clip to her. She needs to answer this interrogation. <laughs> Somebody's probably already recording it and sending it to her. Trust me. They're like, oh my God, Lana's going to get on Nancy Grace. We got to make sure that it doesn't happen. So let's fucking go tell Nancy that Lana's a stalker. Lana is, did you see Lana last night? She was totally stalking Nancy Grace. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I just, I, I, I'm over here and I feel like, you guys, this is why it's important. If Brian Kohlberger did this, right? We have to make sure that Brian Kohlberger can't walk. He can't walk from this. He can't walk. If he killed four people, He's going to walk right now. Do you guys understand that? Do you guys understand that? If he killed four people, he's about to walk. Well, I'm not okay with that. I'm not okay with that at all. But y'all want to live in fantasy land, go right ahead. Just wild. If Brian Kohlberger did this, okay, they may have to give up the couple years or however long, whatever this, whoever this, you know, informant may be that they're trying to keep out of it so that they don't ruin whatever the hell they've been working on for a couple years. But That's that's the way the cookie crumbles. You can't make up all this other shit and how you got to Brian Cooper. If there is, Brian is guilty and Brian did this and you know why this happened and all this stuff, but you had to figure out a different way to get to him because, hey, the FBI said, for example, I'm just using this as an example, to say, listen, we were doing this and we were able to find out X, Y, and Z. And we have this, but if, if we give this to you, which we can't, then it'll take down everything that we've been working on for, you know, however long. So you need to find out a different way to get to this person. Okay. And that to me makes way more sense than all of this. Um, because you just didn't poof, get to Brian Kober. I'm sorry. But what at least would make sense to me is if, if they were to say, listen, this is how we know this, but if we are to go and say this and we blow this cover and what we were doing, it's going to wreck X amount of years that we've been doing to take down something else. And we can't have that. So here's our tip. All right. Find out a different way to get to Brian Kober. Make sense? That's, but more and more that I see this, that's not what I see. Right now, the way that this looks to anybody that, I'm sorry, in my opinion, um, has a critical thinking brain, is it looks like somebody's being framed. I don't know why yet.
But I think the why is really important. Because Brian Kohlberger just popped up on the map in Washington three months prior to the murders. So if he purchased some Amazon knife seven months before the murders, that would have happened in Pennsylvania. So Brian was planning to kill them when living in Pennsylvania because this was premeditated. And he said it was an isolated, targeted attack. So think about all that shit, y'all. Okay? It was an isolated, targeted attack. But Brian Kohlberger bought the murder weapon because he because he knew he was going to kill them when he lived in Pennsylvania? Get the fuck out of here. No. That's just... So it's important to do things the right way. And when you're fundamentally sound, then you don't get caught up with bullshit. Okay, when you do things on the up and up, you don't get caught up in the bullshit. And I think that right now what you see is you see a really fucked up situation. And that sucks for four families. And then what sucks is that you have families that are like, yeah, we want the death penalty, but we want the right person. There's no way that you're going to sit here and tell me that these families want to kill somebody that didn't do it. Okay. So please stop putting that out in mainstream media that the families want to kill Brian Kohlberger. No, they believe in the death penalty. That's their right to believe in. Um, but they would, they want the right person. So I think that they should stop saying things that way. Um, this is just a mess. This is so sad. And um, whoo I think a lot of people are hiding a lot of things. I've proved that. I can prove it over and over. Um, and it's kind of like anything in life you that doesn't mean you're guilty of doing this crime it just means there's other things that you don't want to come out um but it's it is what it is because nobody can seem to get the fucking story straight nobody has given the same story the same time like the exact same way and that's troubling for me why is snapchat completely deleted for people <clears throat> or they can't see it. Why are 12 hours missing? Um, it's wild. But Nancy, you need a new job. Bet better yet, who's ever paying her needs. But you know what? You got the year wrong. You got the year wrong. You got the year yeah. wrong. Okay. You know, this is going to go on and on these attacks on the uh, what do you mean you got the year wrong you have the wrong fucking car is that about a year it's about how you get to a year this vehicle's lights are this way if the lights aren't this way it's not that vehicle it is not you got the wrong year that's not what this is. It wasn't like, oh, that's the car I saw. These are fucking FBI agents that go through training in their methodology and how they are able to identify vehicles. That's what they're asking for. How did you identify this vehicle? Why did you say it was this year versus that year? When did you change your mind? And why did you change your mind? Which are very fucking common questions, normal. They're gonna, this is what's going to be asked on the stand. Like, this is, what are you, what are you doing? These are experts that are going to be questioned. Mr. Smith, why did you say it was 2013? Well, let me show you why. When I took out, this is the video I used. When um, I paused it here and I was able to see this, this, and this. That, that, and that is consistent with this. This is what we have, the tools to do this. This is what I used. Da, da, da. What do you, have you guys ever seen a fucking trial? Nancy, yeah, Nancy, you, you've been part of them. Why do we even have fucking experts testify, Nancy? You're basically saying, fuck it, somebody identified it. Nope, they don't need to ask them any questions. We already have some. You are out of your fucking mind, Nancy, and it's disgusting, and you make me sick right now. 
and you sat here for 30 minutes, 27 minutes and 39 seconds and gaslighted a whole nation. And that should, that this should be a crime. The state's evidence have just begun. We wait as the case unfolds. Yeah, we wait. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thanks, Thanks Chris. Guys, thank you for watching Crime Online with Nancy Grace here on YouTube. Oh, God, that's why she has a job. Subscribe. So she, <laughs> I thought it was. Nancy, you're on YouTube, girl? This whole time, I thought you were, like, working for, like, a, a company. Nancy, okay, hi, Lana, nice to meet you. We could totally debate now because you have your own channel. I have my own channel, and we can do this. Until next time, guys. I don't even know what to say. Hazel, welcome to the to the transparency community. Um, Maple Beef, happy Canada Day, y'all. Have an amazing live live and much love from the one and only Canada. Maple Beef, Canadian. Maple Beef. I don't even know, Mr. Bill. There we go. Deborah, welcome. $9.99 super sticker. Siberian Ninja. Whoop. Thank you, Don. Super sticker. Thank you. Lena, time for a twisted tea, says the chief. Maybe. Carrie Clark, thank you. Oh, there you go. Don says, Dan says, got to go at it again. Doc Terry says, finally caught to a live land. I hope everyone bring it on. Yes. Hello to everyone. Sorry. Uh, Mikey, I feel like I got to confess, stole 20 bucks from my dad in second grade to buy marbles. There you go. He's giving a shout out there for the happy birthday for Canada. Oh, and I learned how to drive stealing my parents' car and driving my friends to school at 14. There you go. Oh, wild. William, thank you for the super sticker. Lily White. Lily White. Nice name. Brandywine. Welcome to Truth and Transparencies. Member. Charm. Thank you for the membership. What does Marin think happened? On 11 14 2022. Ah, she means the 13th. Thank you for that. Dr. Latina. Thank you. So, what does she think about BK's suspect? Well, I think we heard all about that. Something's off. Christy Mack became a YouTube member. Thank you, Christy. Another shout out there, Mike. Yes, shout out to the mods 100. Yeah, they're the best. Robin, welcome. Dr. Latina, so if the father turned him in for a cellular phone allegedly stolen from his sister, don't you think the father would have turned Brian in for a quadruple murder and said FBI had to go through garbage? Exactly. Exactly. Boom. Boom. With the hammer. Virgil, what is up? Welcome. The defense is fighting through court docs, not narratives. <laughs> <clears throat> exactly. She's wild. Virgil King. Hello. Enjoying the stream. Lana, how do you feel about psychics? Most think there, there were three people. I always thought that the theory made more sense. Um, isn't that what you said? Oh no. Physics. Sorry. I thought you said psychics. Is that what you said? I, I feel anything but Nancy Grace right now. <laughs> Thank you. Just Amber Walker membership. I'm behind, but mental note. Never play charades with Nancy. It's funny. Mikey. <clears throat> Again, you guys are great. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, yeah, this is a wrap, man. Such a super live man. I'm so grateful for all your hard work. Dude, I am tired. I'm going to need a break after this. My mind is blown. I am... Uh, I am exhausted. This woman exhausts me. Uh, mainstream media, shame on you. You know, um, y'all should be talking about how there's no blood in the car, Nancy. Remember, he flew out of there. He's a, he's speeding and, you know, oh, but wait, let me, hold on. Let me take all my clothes off first and get into the car naked. 
and then just whip out the clothes as I'm driving. I mean, I'm just wild. Lana. Um, I don't, I, I, I see, but I respect people's work. So like, and, and just like them as people, um, I just, uh, I believe that you can feel things like, you know, you have some intuition and, um, but mm. Like, are we talking about like Whoopi, Whoopi Goldberg style, like from Ghost? Are we talking about that? Speaking of which, let's see. Your channel. Let's see. We got. Rosa Santiago? Please be seated. Sister Otome, grant us the gift of your all-seeing presence. Appear before us now. Buenos dias. Buenos. I'm Odeme Brown. I understand you wish to contact your husband. See, si. I believe he'll be with us today. Thank you. Thank you. But you know, Mr. Santiago, there's no telling about that other world. So you've got to be a believer, Mr. Santiago. Are you a believer? See, si. see, si. I believe. I believe. Let us begin. seem to make contact i i don't feel as far no wait i'm feeling something did he know someone by the name of anna consuelo <laughs> lucita julieta josefina linda maria sissy his mama she is maria yes praise god i knew he was with his mama Oh my God. It's too difficult. It's two of them. I'm not sure I can do that. It's it's so trying. It's oh, I pay more. How much? How much? Twenty dollars. Oh, way to go. Milk her for every penny. Mrs. Santiago, you are fortunate today. The spirits are churning. My husband? <laughs> oh, yeah, where? <laughs> Julio? Yes. Julio! I feel his vibration. Mm. I see him. How is he? How does he look? Oh, his hands are there. <laughs> kingdom where all hands. Oh, Julio. Julio's coming towards us. I see him. <laughs> He's coming. He's there. He's dressed in a black suit. 
Black suit? Could be blue. What a crock of shit. Who is that? Leo! Where are you? Who are you? <laughs> Did you hear it? Where are you? Wait, what's the name? Who are you? Who? Oh, that's... Who are you? Who are you? You can hear me? Sister, don't you hear him? I don't believe this. Hey, you. Who are you? Hey, you. My name is Sam Wheat. Sam, Sam Wheat. Can you hear me? Sam Wheat. Say my name. Say it. Leave me alone. Say my name. Say it. Sam Wheat. Say it. 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 Talk to me, old mate. Say something. What are you? Sam Wheat. Jesus. Sam Wheat? I swear no more cheating. I promise. I'll do anything. I'll do penance. Give me penance. But make that guy go away. No way. <laughs> <laughs> Sam Wheat. Oh, that goes down. That's a top 10 for me. Sam Wheat. Um, oh, Anna has to put on a second part of a movie. Yeah, I had to. Um, no, I would love to get actually my cards read live. That's what I want. So if anybody wants to do that out there, let me know. Um, no, I mean, I, I think like anything in life, there's phony people and there's real people. Um, so I definitely, uh, <clears throat> it's kind of like God, you know, do you believe in God? Well, I believe in God, but why do you believe in God? You know, so I have faith, though. If you're a good person, you're a good person. Um, if you believe in yourself and what you do and you do it for the right reason, then, yeah, I'm all for it, actually. I think that more people should be like that. I mean, you do things for the right reason, then it is what it is. Such a handsome man, Patrick Swayze. Um, but... But you guys, as always, you guys are great. So, yeah, if there's anybody out there that <clears throat> wants to read my cards on a live um, and talk a little bit about the Idaho 4 case, um, I'd be down. I'm curious what my cards say right now. I do read cards on resolved crime. I do read cards. Yes. 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 <clears throat> Again, thank you guys. Today was a long one. Until next time. Keep it real. I know there's a history here. I'd like to get this hearing in today. You know, everybody needs to just focus on the relevant facts, okay? Um, I know there's a history here. I Are you talking up by Sunset Mart? Up the hill by the gas station? Yeah. Okay. Why did you... Here. Who's responsible here? Whose house is this? Have been drinking or anything, right? No. Okay, drive careful, okay? This is what the other group had that ran away. Oh, really? It just did it? Awesome. Those ones kept walking in the car and the other one. It's truly for the win.
two different discs, okay? They all knew about it. This is the second noise complaint we've had here tonight within two hours. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, is this your place? Yeah. Perfect, you know why we're here? Um, I see noise. Noise, yeah. Yeah. Big speaker right there? Yeah. Nothing against having a party. Once the neighbors start calling in, then we have an issue. Like brains, and like if you need a lot of brains, you're going to be in trouble. 29th for people that were murdered and you want to fuck around you got eight seven eight families that are being affected by this and nobody from the universe shock value and so what he did was he had taken pictures pictures oh you're from i would be outraged if i live in moscow right now i'd be lighting some cars on fire out there i'd be flipping some cars i'd get the frats going wild let's get some noise complaints going 